All right, what is up out there, podcast family? Welcome back to another episode of the Hook It Podcast, and this, the third ever installment of Behind the Bike. If you've never listened to a Behind the Bike episode before, the objective of these episodes is to take you, the listener, inside a bike brand and let you know a little bit more what it takes to bring a specific bike model to market and some of the challenges that goes with that. Uh, This episode, though, is a little bit different just because Cy and Rich from Kotick are both really good friends of mine. We decided just to sit at Kotick HQ in Carver in the beautiful Peak District and just talk. Now, I love riding Kotick bikes. I've been riding the Rocket Max for about two months now, but I love the bike, but most importantly, I absolutely love the people and what this bike brand stands for. They're exciting, they're different, they're funny, they're quirky, and the product's really good too, so what's not to love. Uh, I'm not going to hold this one up too much. Let's just get into this episode, guys. We go quite deep into sort of product development, prototyping, and there's a bit of an exclusive too at the end of this episode of an event that's coming up at Kotick. So yeah, without further ado, let's just hand over to Rich Baber and Cy Turner of Kotick and get into this. (laughs) Enjoy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh dear. Right, I think we're all good, so um, yeah, the only thing worried is that, but we should be okay. Yeah, all right. Let's rip it, shall we? Yeah, let's do. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, sorry. What's that? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, boys. Appreciate you doing this. Keeping that on brown with Abedal beer. Good stuff. I like Absolutely. it. I like it. Um, so the premise of the podcast, obviously, is to go behind the bike, which is to talk to people who make bikes happen. So whether that's someone who does all the design process or someone like yourself, Rich, who's Hello. marketing and building bikes too. Um, so for the listeners uh, who are listening, obviously, hopefully, if not tuned out yet, um, we'll do a quick introduction just so people can recognise who's talking because I've listened to podcasts in the past and there's like multiple people and you're like, who's that? Especially the Joe Rogan, Chris Cresser debate. I don't know if you listened to that or not, but yeah, it got, got really yeah confusing. So <laughs> to hand over to Cy real quick, um, quick sort of bio of what you do at Kotick. Um, and then we'll do do Rich straight after. Uh, okay, I'm Cy Turner. I founded Kotick in 2002, and we started selling bikes in 2003. Um, I'm the director. I design all the bikes. Um, I'm. It's only a small company, so I'm involved in a lot of other stuff, including <coughs> occasionally making the coffee, uh, building bikes, whatever. All my fault. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, yeah. So basically, that's what I do. I run the business um, and I design the bikes, um, and I get involved with how we might go about selling them. And uh, that's collaborative. That's collaborative, though. Perfect. Um, yeah. Over to Rich. Rich Baybot. Hello. Podcast uh, Virgin. Well, I've left like really long voice messages for people. <laughs> so. <laughs> Speaking into a microphone on my own for 10 minutes isn't like, isn't the weirdest thing. I'm going to have to start thinking of it like that. Just leaving long voicemail messages to tens of thousands of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah give it a shot. Okay. Oh dear, Hi, this is the latest, the latest circuit podcast. Beep. <laughs> It'll do. You should get I a phone in thing, proper Dude, analog. I know. I want to do a phone That's in. That's a phone message, like they have yeah. on hip-hop albums. In I want to do tracks. a phone in. Just slightly off topic. I only ever did it once where I asked someone to record me a WhatsApp question for a list for, for it was for Danny Mackerskill and I only did it once, but it was so hard to like take the clip, put it in the right place, oh, nice. sync it all up. And I was saying to Danny, I'm like, right, I'm gonna ask you a question, but then I'm gonna input <laughs> this bit of audio and he was like, What? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so blah blah blah. And then I cut yeah, it was a nightmare. <laughs> Never again. Mm. But a phone in would be cool. Yeah, and you maybe you're the man. Maybe you should, no, you should uh, you should set up some sort of phone number where people a bit like Rage Against the Answer Machine. Yeah, the radio. we could do that. We could do that. You could do that and and rant on, and then you wouldn't have to cut it in. Just have all your yeah random trains of thought. You can tell you where to be marketed. Edited. Well, <laughs> they can help us to go along, but hey, aren't yeah, we marketing. Are we all? I've spent this thirty seconds thinking about it. <laughs> so, what do you do at Cotty, dude? Uh, try and get people stoked on bikes. I think it works. I try. Mm. Yeah. I think this could be pretty cool because I'm personally so like invested in you guys as well as like friends. Obviously, the other guys that I've had on through doing the Behind the Bike series and whatever, you sort of 
have to do a lot of research and you have to like try and figure out right what should we talk about whereas you guys it's like just sitting in the pub it's really nice <laughs> like we've got, beer. We've well, got, we've got beer we have got we beer. have got beer so i think it's going to be interesting because we can come at it from totally different angles than the usual structured like i want to talk to you about this bike this company whatever so yeah looking forward to getting into it so um Obviously, Sai, you the first ever guest on this podcast, which is... I was. How weird is that? <laughs> I know. Crazy. Super weird. It's Never almost thought... my third time on the podcast now, because yeah, we did that one be. with Che and Swinney after yeah, you guys yeah. sponsored us that first year. God, it will be. That was random, that episode. Yes. I wouldn't go back and listen to that one, people. No. But me. <laughs> yeah. Episode one, if you want to get, if you're the full skinny on like me and Kotick and yeah. all of that kind of stuff, then go back to episode one. Maybe gloss over that. Maybe what was it episode it. seven or so, oh, something I mean, like that. Been, yeah, it would <laughs> definitely be below ten. Yeah, because I had no idea how to record it, so we got you all on separate Skypes. I think oh, Shay yeah. and James might have even been in the same house. Yeah, I think they were. Full disclosure, I don't think I'd finished that one. Yeah, <laughs> me either. I thought it was weird enough. I was listening to the first yeah. episode a couple of days after you recorded it in the warehouse, halfway through, going, This is so weird because I was at the other yeah, office yeah. or is it on the phone? I've just been speaking to him or something like that, and then he's here, omnipotent, <laughs> out of the speakers. <laughs> this is quite a lot of sight. Yeah. Bless him, he's great. But... No, <laughs> everyone can have too much of everyone, I guess. Yeah. Sure. yeah, but it's cool. Like, it is rad that you did the first one. I remember hitting you with that idea, and we don't need to go over it too much. You know, the episode's there for people, but so I got this idea to do a podcast. You were like, Yeah. Let's do it. I was yeah. like, right, we just need to do a Skype call, I think. It yeah. might record, it might not. Let's see how it goes. And honestly, it's one of the most downloaded ever, which is crazy. Yeah, because I think with the whole Google and all that sort yeah. of stuff, where it comes when you search for the podcast, it always comes up like really high. And yeah. you did quite a bit with it as far as promoting it. Yeah. yeah we, and looking back, it was, you know, one of the first ever mountain bike podcasts. So I think people just hit the, you know, hit, hit download on that one, which was sick. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah, rad. Thank that's you. Awesome. Appreciate it. And thanks for doing it again. How do you no feel worries. about all the explosion of sports podcasts mm. then? About other mountain bike podcasts or in general? Everything. It's since yours, I've obviously noticed yeah. more and more. I think it's awesome. I think... Obviously, like, the rising tide thing. Yeah. From day one, I've been very open, even on this thing, talking about people should have podcasts. Yeah. People should, you know, more people should do it. I think if you look at other sports and sort of, you know, whether it's comedy as well, you know, so many people start these things and it's such a good insight into what's going on behind the scenes. And I think, if anything, with the mountain bike stuff, I think athletes, more athletes should have a podcast. You look at like what you, I always look at UFC because I feel like that's a little bit ahead of the game. Um, but you know, loads of UFC fighters have got their own outlet, whereas mountain biking would not, I don't think anyone's done that yet. I know Tarni's floating around, do it. Just get other people on. It's just a oh, different right. perspective, isn't it? Like, yeah. just get well, other people on. There's been a bit of that in the mountain bike <laughs> side, on the mountain bike <laughs> side of it, though. But I've always preferred. I've 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 found a couple of the map of the rider ones interesting because <coughs> yeah. they maybe get the other riders to be a bit looser because True. they're mates. Yeah. But generally, I find the ones like that are, that have got a proper host right. are better yeah. because they're better at being a host yeah maybe yeah, I think definitely, you, I, you definitely. just tend to it's get a little bit more out of it I've never really thought about the whole being a host thing ever like as you no. know I just literally sit and talk to people whether it's over internet yeah, but you, or yeah, but in person you, person, should, you but shouldn't underestimate how difficult that is or how yeah, difficult that is done, have maybe tons of them now yeah, yeah so exactly yeah. so maybe a, yeah. a sports athlete who starts off in the first few a bit ropey mm. and then they just get better because everybody gets better with yeah I just fall into that yeah no, no but no I think more more the better, you know, I think it's getting, the podcast scene's ch changing quite a bit, I think originally it was quite, just throw it out there, like, don't really think about the technicalities of it too much, like, don't really worry about the sound quality, it's just, it's just this just whole new thing, yeah. just do something, whereas now, it's changing so much, it's about having, like, good quality audio, It's because people expect it now, yeah. like, if they listen to a Joe Rogan, or a Fight with the Kid, or whatever, it's on point audio-wise, like, it's really perfectly clear and there's no sort of but that's also some now, people like the rawness of it though of like oh it's a bit ropey here you know chickens interrupted once well, i pissed myself it? here or whatever like four, yeah. 4g connections modern phones yeah. you know the in-ear headphones yeah. that like yeah. the quality of the sound equipment that you've got in your pocket is so sure. much better than it was five years ago so, sure. so yeah it's bound to be isn't it yeah and i think it just it is just leveling up a little bit i know people now will sit and want to watch a podcast like a lot of people, I, I, do it, I sit and watch podcasts at home. 
Yeah, I'm so glad this one wasn't filmed because yeah. I knew it was going to tidy up. I'd be quite busy today. <laughs> I thought you'd have put clothes on. No, <laughs> <laughs> don't mind. <laughs> Not the heating on this, but warm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It just seems, it, it is changing. It's about trying to be mindful of not like chasing the dragon too much like yeah. I was saying to you before we started recording like you know the last few weeks we just had off it's like I ain't got time to do it I'm not just going to do it for the sake of doing it anymore yeah. Yeah. feeling like you have to I'd rather deliver something good rather than yeah. just yeah just like oh just get anyone and everyone on so unfortunately you guys slipped through the net here a little bit uh, <laughs> no, <I'm waiting> for <laughs> so on, we uh, were going <laughs> to <laughs> interview me. Tell us a joke, yeah. be funny. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk mainly about the Rocket Max. Yeah. Um, again, this whole premise is about behind the bike. So yeah, we'll yeah. take a bike and we'll sort of discuss how it came to market and sort of what mm. you've done to market it and all everything that goes in between that. So I think the best way to kick this off, obviously, is saying I've ridden one, which is, you well, know... That's a good start. I've ridden, yeah, which was a great start. We did a moto shoot together, which was pretty good fun. Obviously. Um, you know... I'm not going to sit here and try and review a bike because it's not what I'm about, but it's always good to get a feel of it. And I've yeah. always loved riding your bikes, like always from day one. And you guys are super helpful for me when I don't have a bike to be able to come and grab one and go for a ride. And I always choose a Rocket Max. Um, <laughs> thing rides like a dream, climbs good, descends good, as good as can be with me on it anyway. Um, for the record, it's pretty fast. Yeah, for the record, if the right person's on it, it's yeah. pretty damn fast. Yeah. Moto bit did stick. <laughs> it's paid off in some respects, you know. Oh, really? If I've got to listen to you talk about it, it's like, well, actually, it's pretty fast. So it's, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a weird one with that because I don't ride too much, but yeah, it's some of When it. you do, when we do, I like to get on it. You should yeah. do more of it. Uh, yeah, we'll do. start a podcast if you ride your bike a bit more. All right. <laughs> Cottoncast coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, rather than like really try and review the bike and stuff, that's yeah. not like I say, it's not really what we're about. For me, it's just about getting a feel for it and being able to talk about it a bit more. Yeah. Um, so let's start with at the beginning, I guess, with this bike, the rocket. Yeah. Is that right. Started the ro- with the rocket. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so the whole drop link thing started with the rocket, which was our first steel full suspension bike we did do a, our first full suspension bike was called the hemlock way back in 2006 there, the seven, oh, under right. the desk. okay you i've got see, a photo of that after it, looks like it doesn't look <laughs> like <laughs> another <laughs> brand um yeah and i i because i wanted to design a full suspension bike and that that bike was okay it had some interesting ideas but it's made out of aluminium it mm-hmm. was kind of clunky looking um we we had it on a stand at one of the shows in like 2009 or something and there was like the soul and the beefy and they were all like the super bright colors and all the slim lines and the, you know and everything was there and then that was kind of on the end of the stand it looked like another brand had kind of just like oh, really? dumped their bike on the end of the stand it just didn't fit at all <laughs> okay so we finished with that about 2010 and i was looking at what's going to be the next bike and after a lot of soul searching and thinking about it was actually a really seminal moment the whole drop link project because it was like it made me really think about what it was that Kotick was right so it was quite a it was real like what makes what constitutes a Kotick product what looks like a Kotick because you said well that doesn't look like a Kotick well what looks like a Kotick yeah um so there was a lot of that going on I did a ton of different ideas of suspension layouts to like and a lot of it was driven by the looks Mm. You know, th- there had to be a certain level of functionality, and I knew how I could make that work. But I tried rocker link designs, long links, short links, you know, all, all of this kind of stuff. And we ended up with this design that was drop link, which was the, the, the classic two line, you know, the top tube in line with the seat stay. Mm. And it was all kind of um, the steel thing kind of came around almost like a bet. I wasn't okay. planning to make it out <laughs> of steel. Okay. Um, but my mate, my mate said, well, all your other bikes are steel and they're really good and you like steel for the hardtails. Why do you make out of steel? I was like, nobody makes steel full suspension bikes. So I bet if you just took the front end of a beefy, it'd be, it'd be brilliant. And it was one of those hold my beer moments. It was just, it was just like, <laughs> yeah. So, so I, did all this, I did all the maths and it started working out. And okay. I was like, actually, this is... This I'm is interested gonna... too, so when you say the maths, like what, what do you use to design all this stuff on? Okay, so the first thing you do, so the, there's, there's a bunch of different stuff. I have... Um, so for doing layouts, mm-hmm. like so, I'm talking about like the different l- linkage layouts and things like that. I just have two di- two D CAD software. So basically, an electric drawing board. Okay. Um, 
you just draw draw lines on a page, and it's and particularly because bikes, in terms of geometry and broad function, are very side on flat. Yeah. Um, it's really good for doing geometry development because you can just iterate it super fast because it's dead easy to use and you can just change things really, really quickly and mm. do like, and you can just do a PDF and send it to everyone and say, what do you think about this? Right, and right. So it's super, super quick and it's really easy. Um, so I use that. Um, I use Excel spreadsheets a lot okay. because you do that just to do broad comparisons. So like when I say I do the maths, mm. um, my first thought was, well, if I'm anchoring the front to the back of the bike, I need to make sure the seat tube's stiff enough. So I worked out just using some real basic first year, first year engineering, first year university engineering, like some basic um, calculations. You can work out the stiffness of a, of a beam, right, wow. and then you compare it to the stiffness of another beam. And it's just super quick. Yeah. That's that stiff, that is that stiff. And then you look at the steel one, you go, oh, that's actually stiffer mm. than the aluminium one. And suddenly you're swimming against that received wisdom that aluminium is super stiff. I mean, it generally right. is in the sections that you use it. But in this particular case, because yeah. the seat tube is only, has to be 35 mil in diameter broadly, because it doesn't fit, because it has to fit loads of other things into it. Mm. Um, the steel one was actually stiffer. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> interesting. Well, that's a good that's a good starting point because the bit in the middle of the bike is actually stiffer than I'm currently using, so the front tied to the back real good. Yeah. Um, okay. Ah, so it's going to be dead heavy then because it's steel <coughs> compared to aluminium. You work it all out. Oh, it's only forty grams heavier. That's not a lot. Huh. And it just so, and so it goes and then then that what what it was it built out from there. So you stress right. out the down tube. Will that take you know? Will that take the loads? You stress yeah. out the top tube well that that needs to be the same as that bike to work like this okay and suddenly it all starts it, you know it all starts adding up and making sense and we were like oh actually this this is going to be this is going to be steel this is going to be really cotic right 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 um and that was how the that was how the rocket came around and it was a total pun i've never been i have never been more nervous of riding a prototype than riding that bike when really? we first got them right because it was basically the culmination because we had to get them prototypes in taiwan <clears throat> So that took eight months to get three frames. Is that how long it takes? Five really? takes ages. They really? do not want to build prototype. They want to build hundreds yeah, for you. They yeah, are not yeah. interested. So it's, it's like pulling teeth, getting getting samples out of them. Particularly something like this, which was full random. Like, right. You know, okay. Like loads of like all steel, loads of like separate jigging, all of this kind of stuff. So is it you case you just like hounding them for eight months of like come on? Well, they kept what, what they kept what they kept doing. Luckily, tool luckily tooling up for fixtures and things like that is quite a lot cheaper out there than mm. it would be over here. Mm. So what they kept doing is throwing up these little barriers and going, oh, oh, we need a new mold for that tube, so that's going to cost you know this much money, and it would be like fifteen hundred quid or something like that. You know, over here, like a press tool for a steel tube like that would be like. 20 grand or really? something like right, that you right. know, but over there they just make the tools in a you know in a different way and they maybe yeah. use i don't know how they do it but anyway the tool <laughs> they keep throwing tooling costs go, oh there's going to be tooling costs they keep throwing these costs and i'm like no do it there's them yeah oh really yeah, 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 yeah do it no do it and eventually i think they realized that i just this i wasn't going to Be go serious. away yes <laughs> But when it got there, you're still there going like, well, this is like, yeah, I've done, I've done all my design work and I've done my, like my stress analysis because I do have like finite element analysis software. So once you've gone from the mm. basic kind of layouts and you think it's going to happen, then you get into the detail. Um, but yeah, that, that first bike was just like, okay then, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, it could, you know, it could be brilliant. Yeah. Could fold in two. You know, we will see. Prototyping is really fun. I don't think I've gone through any sort of prototyping here that I've really enjoyed. Really? No. It's always a bit like a bit so I say, I was just going, this is either brilliant or I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. This there's quite a big gap in between. I don't yeah, people see that yeah. side of it all, eh? Like, that's, that's the thing. It's like you'll be there going, like you, you'll be there, like literally, <clears throat> I, was, I, was, I was mucking around with a little bracket something it's, it's like the most minor thing and i was literally like mucking around with that this week and it turned up 
Oh God, and I'm there, and I'm like, you know, I'm <laughs> well, there, the term, like, come there, on. Yeah. the okay. term you came up with, hand finished. Yes, <laughs> we're not, not bodging it. It's hand finished. It's not bodging it works. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it so I'm the there, so I'm there with this fucking block of aluminium in the, like, they're all building bikes, and I'm there with the bloody file. Oh and, no, and <laughs> yeah, prototyping. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's not glamorous. It's it's actually, it, I mean, it's it's fun once you know the bike works yeah, you're actually into yeah. the development but the first couple of rides are always a bit <laughs> no coming back actually tell a lie prototyping the long shot I know we've missed out a massive chunk of time back yeah. prototyping the long shot because you got on you did all the stress and it worked and you're like this works because yeah, yeah. I've done the maths and it's based around a rocket shape that we already have that yeah, works yeah. blah blah and everybody who rode it went oh my days this is Right. This is the one. Yeah, okay. that, that was, the, that was the, the best. Yeah, that was the best prototyping because it yeah. worked straight away, and everybody was like, "This is nothing like I've ever ridden before, but it's better." Yeah. Right. Is exactly what prototyping should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, do that, it, do fact, it now. Do it yesterday. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was that was crazy. Yeah, because like to skip forward, like <laughs> so the drop link idea flowed into the new rocket, which you know the 2015 rocket, which was 27 and a half inch wheels, mm-hmm. but broadly the same idea. Yeah. Um, and then in 2016, we had we'd been working. Our, so we brought out the first Rocket Max and the first Flare Max and the first Flare, which are the trail bikes. And the Max ones have big wheels. So yeah. suddenly we've got this range of bikes, but and they're still based on that original concept: dropling suspension, steel frames, all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had good, and they had really good solid geometry for the time. They were pretty progressive for the time, but yeah. they weren't like crazy long or anything like that. Um, they just were good, real good bikes um, mm. with a lot of the features that we liked. Um, but yeah, the long shot thing then happened after that. And that, the, the other side of that was the, the prototype. The other brilliant thing of that is, like you say, when I'm prototyping with the Taiwanese, it just takes months and months and months. Okay. And this had kind oh, yeah. of come out of the period where I tried to get stuff made in the UK before and that didn't go well. Um, but I'd had a bunch of contacts and, I, and, and things. And and I'd been working with Shand a little bit because okay. I knew Stephen, uh, knew, like, started getting to know Stephen really well. And they were beginning to wonder whether they wanted to do some subcontract stuff to like help things out. And we were just kind of going, you know, just, just like maybe something here. Um, anyway, um, Stephen got in touch. I saw Chris Porter do a tech talk with A-Line, uh, JP from A-Line got Chris Porter up yeah. and I love okay, Chris, yeah, he's yeah. just one of my favourite people. Um, so Formerly of Mojo, Mojo. now of Geometron, and Geometron. All, he, him yeah. of super long bikes and they, he had the Geometron and he'd done this tech talk <coughs> on like super long bikes. Okay. So I went along and, and I'd what, see, what year was that? 2015, yeah. November 2015. I so it's remember first it batch. Yeah, okay. And he had his bike with him. Um, so I was like, come on, Chris, let me have a quick go on your bike. I literally, I did a car park test in the dark on this bike. But the big thing, big takeaway from it was, this just feels like a bike. Yeah. Well, you know, and you know, because because everything in my like, kind of shuttered in, I I realised that I'd gone into this kind of, I'd got a little bit sort of pleased with myself, I guess, as a, you know, I've been doing this 10 years now, I know what me, but mm. I didn't, I wasn't open enough to new ideas and I wasn't, to be fair, the launch enough. had gone really well for the yeah 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 for stuff. sure. But yeah. I think the thing is, is when you're prototyping with the Taiwanese and it takes all this time, you have to be you, you get a little bit conservative because it's sort of got to be right first time. Otherwise, it's another eight months, and then you suddenly right, two you're years, and then you're behind the time. So, That's so interesting. It, it, so yeah. it does sort of breed a little bit of conservatism, mm. and there's a little bit of received wisdom in there. And I just realised that I actually had to be bold and I had to break out of this and I had to try this for myself so I said right like Richard said the first geometry prototype it was exactly the same as a rocket it was just the longest front end we could put the longest tube Reynolds made and then right, leave at, it on at the, the time at the time and then leave it on the machine a little bit longer <laughs> like leave it rough cut we'll just like the longest tube we can make and we got and we made a we made we took a large rocket 275 and we gave it a 507 mil reach, which was, you know, enormous. I mm. think the biggest one at the time we were doing was 470 for the XL, which right. was pretty long anyway. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, but the but the big thing was is like Stephen just, I, I, I Stephen Shand like early December, I had this bike drawn up like literally the following week after seeing Chris, and then Stephen dropped me a message and said. Um, 
and said, uh, you know, we, um, you know, if you had any more thoughts about, you know, what, you know, what you might want to, you know, this this thing we've been talking about, yeah. and I said, well, maybe, but I've got this bit of a bit of an idea for a front end, you know, what? And I sent him the drawing. He said, well, we could, you know, we could make you that. Great, great. So I think I sent him the drawing on the fourth of December, yeah. and I had the front end on the. 19th of December no wow. like he made it in like two weeks wow. I was like wow this is brilliant <laughs> yeah. I had this idea like a month ago <laughs> it was just like now I've got it seven then, months in the bank yeah yeah, yeah. exactly so and then yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and the thing was it's like I took it out and I had this tiny little stem on it and I went up to Lady Cannings and I rode it and I was just like I mean, it was like the big epiphany it was like one of the biggest really? epiphanies for in my whole life of Design Did you feel bikes. at that time like you were a little bit behind the times? No, because actually, the longest you, like a thing was going. No, like, and you weren't there. No, not at all. Because okay. Chris was Chris was miles okay. into the, you know, into the. He's in twenty forty. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Looking back, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Come on, oh, guys. He was, <laughs> even his bike then is longer than the longest bike we currently make. You know, right, so okay. he he okay. is way over, you know, the, the far side of yeah. things. Yeah. Um, so no, not at all. Our bikes were right on the money. You know, you were you'd buy if you know if you bought a large, um, you know if you bought a large rocket in you know in the middle of twenty sixteen, you were getting a bike with a four fifty mil reach and a sixty five degree head angle mm-hmm. and um, you know and a pretty decent wheelbase and um, and yeah it it rode. You know, it rode. You know, rode just as well. There were plenty of bikes that were way shorter. You know, yeah. way shorter at the time. So yeah. actually, our bikes were have always been on the longer side. Anyway, okay. it's not like it were. You know, we weren't. It wasn't super conservative, but it was just kind of. It was in the game. It was mm. in the. You know, it was around where the market was. And then suddenly, I had this thing that was. You know way too long yeah. he said waving quite marks <laughs> for this podcast uh, way too long and it was brilliant yeah. and then I put some I, and then I put an angle set in it and made the head angle in this like 64s and it was even better and I was like oh my god and that, wow. that's the kind of started it okay it was really confusing we couldn't keep up with the swing arm changes and the wheel size changes right. and the angle sets and we're like what was it at now? Oh, 62 and a half plus oh, 27 and a half back at 29 and a half 23. Oh, but then the swing on rail and the brake curve and the shot man. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Just, <laughs> this is the bad side of prototyping. And then he goes, right, this is, this is, this is, try this, try this one. Yeah, yeah. Size two, size is too big for me. Just try it. Okay, and I'm pedaling up to Ian, stretched out, going, I don't know, I don't know. And you pointed down, I can't remember because it was at the bottom. <laughs> Instantly, like, oh, oh, I think this might be something. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I don't know enough about brake curves and, yeah. and damper settings. And all yeah, that. I'd love to know it more about that in a way, to like, to be able to go like, super down that rabbit hole with you, but yeah. I'm not the guy for that, I don't think. No, and to, be to be honest, I think people would get bored. Mm. Um, but it's... Uh, and, and to be honest, it's a preference thing. I mean, it's it's I have a preference for how I like to bike, and it's informed by riding things and trying things, and that preference changes over time. Because yeah. I, because one of the big things that the long shot project did is I'm a lot more open to ideas now. I'm you know I'm much less you know sort mm. of grumpy engineer about stuff. I'm okay. like you know oh new idea let's try that let's try see it. you know let's get excited and see and like speak from a position. Oh, I had those. Um, I had some of those trust for oh, trailer really? link forks because they offered to lend me a pair to yeah. have a go, and I was like, "Yeah, let's give them a go." Whereas before you'd be like, "No, you're gonna go." Well, you know, rigid. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never been that. Never, never been quite. Never been. Uh, never been quite that that militant. But, uh, but no, yeah, no. I'm, I, it, it's been brilliant from that point of view because I'm a lot more open now. But no, a lot of it is informed by the fact that you know, I, I, I think where my skill lies is relating that seeing that rate curve on the screen to what I'm feeling on the bike and then right. when I change it I was like okay so that means that that rate curve means this mm. or that head angle means this so I I think my ability my ability is to understand the correlation between what yeah. I'm feeling on the trail to what's going on on the computer and that's the important part so, like that, really and that, so that's how the, the development steps steps on you know yeah. you know builds on itself yeah yeah um so I think um, I think that's I think that's what it is. That, that seems to be the thing that I I am able to do that other people 
are less able to do. Mm-hmm. Is that the time that JP took us to Kang's? Like, I know it's relatively flat flow trail with some berms and you can pump the whole way down without pedalling. Yeah. And he he gave us all the bikes and like zeroed all of our shock settings and we were yeah. like, roll down with no pedals, pedal back up to the top and he said, right, put on a few clicks this way and a few clicks that way yeah. and we had to make, oh no, it's maybe to the extreme end. Yeah, we did extremes, didn't and we? And then ride it again. How does the bike feel? Do you feel faster, slower? Yeah. You had to sort of ride it as if you were trying to replicate the first run. Okay. But do you have more grip in the corners? Do you have to push a bit harder to get your speed? Mm. All this stuff and it, it, it didn't quite stick because it was, it was brilliant but a little bit like school and it sort of went in and came out okay. just as fast. Yeah. But, but it gave the beginnings of the vocabulary to know more about the suspension. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, mm. oh, what is compression? What is rebound? What is damping? What is... Yeah. Yeah. And that's as well like... Speed, with, where does it help? And yeah. Things like that. And going to a coach and getting or somebody who really knows their stuff yeah. and going, this is what your bike does when... Yeah. Mm. And that's like part this. of the journey of doing this for me has been some of that. I think we talked about that on yeah. the trail. Like, I'm really bad with feeling... Been kind of numb on a bike. Like, yeah. you could do, I think, most things to it. I'll be like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. I'm just like, like... Just that, I don't know what it is. It's that mentality. It just get on it and ride it. it. Yeah, like, if you, I was riding into <clears throat> a oh, I can't remember, Burbage Way, something like that. It's yeah. really, really rocky and tech. And I was thinking, right, how does my bike feel? Is it high speed? Is it low speed? Is it compression or rebound? I was like, oh, it's a little, little like super slow on the rebound. So it's low speed rebound. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Mm, yeah, I think I'm right. getting this vocabulary. Look yeah. down and my shot was locked out the whole time. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I so was right. What? They were right. I'm absolutely bang on, but I could have made my ride a lot more fun yeah. if I just flip that little lever so I yeah. can touch it. I'm tempted to just chop it off. That's why I've got hand finishing. No. Hand finish it. That's yeah. why I know. So you need to go the other way. You need the princess switch. No, I don't. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a remote on my climb switch so if okay. I forget to turn it off I just have to flip it with my thumb yeah, so, nice, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah Kelly Jane's got one on her bike she called it the princess switch this princess morning switch. and I was like yeah that's totally what it is I, <laughs> I love mine it's the princess switch some people do switch. have that feeling like as well you know, do, not, not to your extent like no your, maybe like, not but, um, but then I, I couldn't tell you I can't tell the difference be, between two clicks on a shot mm. like that's the thing is so, uh, quite a lot of time people go pe- like you've got to I really feel that people have got to back themselves a little bit particularly if they don't feel that they know about this stuff it, mm. because it is just feel yeah. and it is just learning so yeah. don't think there's like right or wrong because your preference is going to be different to my preference for sure so like all Cotic bikes with the Cane Creek Shock, that's got like four damper adjustments, high and low speed, compression and rebound. Plus you've got your air pressure, pressure as well. Yeah. Um, and, pe- and some people are a little bit like, oh my God. But it goes out with a Cotic bass tune on it mm. that, that I've worked out so that if you don't want to do knob twiddling, just set your fr- you know, set your bike up according, you know, set the air, you know, sh- set the air up, set the spring up according to the manual just ride it ride it yeah it's fine it'll yeah. be it'll be in the ballpark it'll probably be 95% of your ideal setting yeah. because yeah. and it's written down in the back of the manual printed out this is your setting this is oh, your really? setting and then okay. you can mark oh, that's really it's good. a bit too fast or slow and you can put little and if you lose that you can go on the Cane Creek website and it'll type in Cotty Rocket Backs and it'll be on there as well oh, wow. so it's like that's cool right, yeah, okay. so, so we try and look after people from that point of view but I do really encourage people like I know, I know it's difficult when you're time poor and you just like, you know, like Saturday afternoon is your time to ride mm. f- to feel like you're going to sort of you go to school. Mm. Well, not necessarily go to school, but like maybe what you consider waste a ride by just instead of going on a proper big loop, just like riding laps and fiddling yeah, with your bike. Yeah. But um, and, and if you don't want to do that, I totally get why you wouldn't want to do that. But if you do... You can learn a lot, but the key thing is, is don't just do like one click at a time. You're not going to feel it. Mm. You're not going to feel it. Just do like what, what exactly what we did. Ride your bike down with the compression damping all the way off. Yeah. And then think about how that feels. And then ride it with it all the way on and think about that feels. And they'll both be disgusting, but they'll be disgusting in different ways. And you think, yeah. well, did, did I prefer that disgusting or this disgusting? That's fair. Yeah, that's a good um, idea. And, sure. then put it, and then what you do is put it in the middle and you go, well, that's... And then you... And you sort of, it, it's called bracketing. Right. And basically, you go, you put it in the middle and then you go, well, I preferred it more... 
towards the slow or more towards mm. the fast. So then you do go in the middle, you know, so you halve it, yeah, so you put it in the middle again, so you're effectively in quarters yeah. now, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. at that point, you're within a couple of clicks of it being. That's good. You just do that. I like that. And you'll, you'll I'll need. Have to write to get more, say. <laughs> you'll, you, but you, you'll need, like, I don't know, you'll probably need an afternoon's worth, like eight, eight or nine runs down a repeatable track that you can probably pump down instead of, like, mashing the pedals. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you'll you you'll get it you'll get it dialed and if and if you come back to the same setting or if you just want to go back to the base settings you might have learned something. Mm. True, very true. Good, I like that. Um, so moving on from like the prototyping part. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. You obviously make a decision that this is the right bike. You've prototyped everything. Yeah. What was the next step to then making it a reality? Because and was the was the thought of making this a UK made front? Yeah. Always there. Was there ever any like? No, no, that that that's no. Oddly enough, actually, it was it as amazingly bang on the right first time we got that first long shot prototype. Right. That give or t you know give or take a couple of details, that first long shot prototype is the XL Rocket geometry today. Right. You know, literally that bike with a one degree angle set in it. But you know we've changed stand over heights and we've tweaked tube sets mm. and all that kind of stuff since. But broadly, the angles, the BB height, the wheelbase, all of that, yeah. that bike is the XL today. Right. Okay. It was that bang on. It was just <laughs> so like unbelievably like this is the future. Cool. And but I, I was already riding a Rocket Max out of preference by that point. I'm. You know, I'm six foot two and a half, six yeah. foot three. You know, yeah. I ride a I ride a twenty nine. That there's just no drawbacks to me riding a twenty nine or I love them. And I had a prototype. I oh, know by then I've been no, no no we quite we weren't in production by then. So I was on a prototype Rocket Max, but for the conventional geometry okay. at that point. Right. And obviously we've got this really really long bike, and it got to kind of middle of twenty sixteen, and I was like. Well, this this is brilliant. Let's just build, let's build a twenty nine er and let's go let's go all out. Um, it, it took me a long time to get the. Really? <laughs> to get, it took me so. I don't know. I still don't know why. I think possibly because I was still hemmed hemmed in a little bit with received wisdom or right. like twenty nine ers needed this instead of just trying it. You know, just going for it. Yeah. But what we ended up with was the first prototype. What I should say is that none of them rode badly, but none of them were like as obviously wow mm, as mm. that first one. Um, so yeah, so I had a first prototype, and that that needed a lot of hacking around, and I never got quite comfortable on it. Um, and it was only a one forty bike because we only had one access to one forty forks at the time. And okay. There was a lot of like to and fro, and I thought oh, no, that's not quite right. I need to go so. Um, there was another prototype after that, which was a really good bike. It's, it still didn't feel to me like it, it was a Rocket Max, but actually what it turned out to be was effectively the Flare Max. Okay. So that bike, we needed to commit to the Flare Max, which is our trail bike 29er, the, like the 120, 130 bike. Mm. It was sort of like the sleeper hit of the big kind of, you know, when we grew the range to four bikes, yeah. We were like, well, like a 29er enduro bike's gonna sell and the rocket's gonna sell, and people have said they want like this flare kind of lively. And then the flare max was just kind of the fourth bit of the square. It was like, well, we've got this kind of Lego set of bits and yeah. we can make a short travel 29er. But things are the market was beginning to tip at that point, and actually the flare, the 27 and a half inch version trail mm. bike, sold okay but the flare max was like the sleeper hit it really? was like you, you know expecting it. yeah yeah and, right. and so so a we needed to reorder some but we were way into 2017 and we were like well, we've got this whole new geometry and like we can't have we can't be going into like the middle of 2018 with, is with, with this conventional bike like from order to well, delivery yeah, nine months is, is it right got it sort of roughly yeah. Yeah. um so actually that was the point at which with the green bike i uh this is they were all painted different colours, so this is how I okay. differentiate because <laughs> it was white, he got it no. like two days, you know. Yeah, it's like two weeks after he'd ordered it from Shand and it was rattle can. I rattle can in front of my garage. I think yeah. it had mismatched brakes, 
And it was like a an true OCD prototype. nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> it was terrible. And then we took it to Rebs and battered it around on the uplift for a day. Right. And it was like, I'm trying to think of like Terminator or something where someone's face is just melting off it was like that it was awful <laughs> it was, like, so it was shocking you couldn't look at it you couldn't be in the same room as it like, it rides like a dream but it looks like a bag of <laughs> no, smash no. crabs it is nasty I love that that day I was terrified of going to revs but right. Jay the team wanted to test Twinny had just joined the team. Yep. The team wanted to test. Is it super muddy? Is it that no, it's okay. so cold. Yes. I don't know why I know about that, but yeah. But, and so we went. We hired the place out for the day, like midweek, so it was only us. And JP, coach from A-Line, knew the guys, and he was like, no, 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 come, like, we'll go. You know, you've got to come, you've got to come. And I was like, oh, all right, then. And, we, and I took this prototype. And I wrote, I remember riding down Ghetto for mm. the first time down those massive holes into corners going I can't go over the handlebars this is amazing <laughs> and it's still my favourite track I went there like 10 days ago really? and I was just I, I was riding ghetto like it was a flow trail on my Rocket Max <laughs> it was just like this is just brilliant I love it it's a mid afternoon to warm up there, just <laughs> clinging on so by my cold. fingernails to everybody going oh, I'm not good at bikes <laughs> <laughs> they're all really fast it's really slippery <laughs> but yeah, it, was, it was brilliant it cool. was brilliant so luckily that bike got uh, got a new lease of life because Shand had built it and wanted it for their bespoke stand so they had it back and put this beautiful like olive drab oh, right. like, like paint job on That's it with like nice. pinstripe and then it was that was what was in all the photos if you ever saw the long shot prototype yeah. um, same bike we couldn't believe it got back and went, oh you beauty <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's beautiful yeah. um, but anyway the, the other green bike the 29er was that was that was the one that I was riding and I was like well this is the point where um, I, I'm alright am I alright swearing yeah of course yeah, yeah so <laughs> we, have, we have this thing yeah so um, yeah so this is the point where I, I pulled out the fuck it button and gave it a good old press cool. so we said well I was like well it's not quite it's not quite a rocket max yet but it's a bloody good trail bike so this is the new Flare Max, and effectively, with a couple of tweaks, that bike was the geometry which defined the Flare Max, which right. was the the Gen Two Flare Max, which was the first long shot uh, full suspension bike that we okay. did. Um, but it was nearly it was over a year it was it was over a year after that before we actually went into Rocket Max mm -hmm. because then yeah so the UK production thing happened because a couple of ex Shand guys who built those prototypes then set up on their own okay. and we're saying we're interested if you're interested um, so yeah that's five land but it turned out to be five land bikes Matt and Callum so okay, we started Scotland is that right in Scotland yeah yeah, yeah yeah so we started working together and we was like well I need another prototype for these frames and we potentially can work with you guys mm. to make this happen so it took a few more months than uh, it always takes a bit longer than you hope but no they, they've been brilliant and they got so they got me this um they got me this pre-production prototype rocket max like the first week of june and that that three weeks in june is one of the most emotional up and down <laughs> roller coasters really? of my entire professional Why? career because what it was so it was a confluence of things I, we'd just come back from our first ever fort william so we were like we we were hallucinating. We were so tired, but we were buzzing. We were so we were so stoked on it. It was brilliant. This prototype turns up. You know, obviously I've tried making UK manufacturing work before. Yeah. Didn't happen. Um, you know, a lot of heartache, a lot of money lost. Um, on both sides of that deal, you know, it wasn't mm. just me. It was it was a tough time, and it was, and suddenly, and. I've been waiting for this prototype because I know the current bike's not quite right, but we've had to wait for the guys to make it and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I've been like dreaming about this bike for like nine months. Okay. It's actually the first British made pre-production cottage. We're actually going to do this. It's in this beautiful teal paint job. And I'm just like, this is amazing. And I built it and it was terrible. Oh, no way. <laughs> it was terrible. Right. Yes. <laughs> I was just heartbroken. I was, so, I was. I was heartbroken. That's so good that you admit it, though. Because uh, some people just gone. It'll do. No, no, <laughs> it'll be no, all right. No, 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 no really? absolutely well, not. And I was like, Walk around on eggshells. Oh, oh no, oh, now he's not that bad. I was. That, I, I was just. And the well, thing was, it was so bad then. What, what was it? I still don't fully understand what it was 
but basically what I'd done is that I'd got, I think I'd got scared. It was this received wisdom thing and there was a little bit of an element because we'd gone direct at that point. People yes. had started buying off the numbers a little bit more. Right. So you have, as I was like, uh, and the, the green bike that I'd adapted by the time it had got 160 forks on it, the head angle is like 64 degrees. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was amazing. You know, there was a lot, you know, the BV was a bit high, the seat angle wasn't right. There's was a bunch of things about it that needed sorting. But broadly, I loved it. Mm. It just needed these tweaks. So I'd drop the BB, steepen the seat angle. But I was there going, uh, 64, that's, uh, you know, 29er. People think these need to be steeper. I, and I, and I, I think I, I bottled it. Right, really. Right. So I made it a little bit steeper on the head angle with yeah. the 160, and with the 160 fork, but with the lower BB. Right, it just. It just brought put the handlebars too high. Every, um, the handlebars just got a bit too high, and the B, you know, relative to the BB, and it just was too it felt like I was on top of it. It was like mm. I was, you know, I'm, I'm doing horrible demonstrative things on a podcast <laughs> again. Um, but I can take some pictures to put on. <laughs> it, felt like the, uh, it, it felt like the bars were too, the, you know, it felt like the bars were up by my nose. Imagine you know, it's that kind right of thing. You know, yeah. And it was just like, I couldn't, I was trying to tip it into corners and it was dead vague and I tried dropping the bars and it just, I couldn't switch the bike on, mm. you know, I mm. couldn't, whereas every other long shot prototype I'd had, the, you know, the defining characteristic of them is that they've got this tiny short stem, this great big length, and you stand up in the middle of the bike, and the moment you stand up, all your weight goes onto your hands, and you feel like you've got all the grip in the world yeah. on the front of the bike. You know, you just you just can't, and it just feels brilliant, and I didn't get this on this bike, and I was like, what have I done? So I was back in, and I was measuring, and I built up the green bike again, and I was back-to-back -back testing, and I was just like, and again, it just got back into this thing of, well, just throw all the received wisdom out. Mm. Throw it all in the bin. A bit like, of ego just, just, or not? A little yeah, bit? a little bit. No, just, I, I don't know whether it was, I don't think there was, it wasn't ego. I think it, like, I think bottled it is definitely the okay. right say. Because yeah. it wasn't, I think if it was ego, I'd have been there stamping my feet saying, so it is right, yeah, it is right. That's you know, kind point. of thing. Yeah, no, yeah. I knew it wasn't right. Ordered them and then, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and, it's a bit of and under bless every year. my, bless <laughs> my, my, my night riding buddies, bore a lot of the brunt of this. Me riding this bike that I've been waiting for and just being really pissed off oh about God. it and right. just stuff like that. So they they deserve a a hat tip for putting up with me for that couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, anyway, after and I realised that actually the main difference, the main thing was, despite the fact it's like it was half a degree in it or something like that, was that the green bike was slacker hmm. it just it was the green bike was slacker and that's that and that was the only difference and it was definitely better so i've got to go slacker but with with the head angle i had versus the angle sets that were available to me the you know the next step after that was like 63 and you know the mid mid 63s hmm. and suddenly you're like that slack because the thing what I'd done with the with the other bike, with the 275 bike, is I'd, I'd got the head angle into the 62 at one point, and that was too yeah, slack. Right. That's why I was super confident about it, because I'd gone too far, yeah. and I'd come back, and I'd found this like sweet spot that I was like, yes, that's that's it. You know, because if uh, it got to this point where I was riding down this crazy steep stuff in Mac Forest with Chain and Swinney again, right. but I couldn't stick, the, I couldn't get far enough forward to stick the front wheel down because it was so slack. Right, right. So I was like, no, I need to come back in a little bit. And I think maybe that informed it a little bit. Okay. But anyway, there's something about the way that the bike interacts with the 29-inch wheels and all of that. Anyway, I stick this angle set in. And the first ride I did with it, I stuck the angle set in, put it in the van, went to Lady Bower and met my night riding buddies. And we did Cutgate. It was like the middle of June. It was almost like the midsummer ride. So we rode Cutgate and back in an evening. And I just remember it was it was the epiphany moment again. I just had the best ride. The bike felt amazing. I was riding down that flat that flat out section to North America, yeah. just going, I cannot believe how fast this bike is. Yeah, it's exactly. just like it was just riding so and it was so composed and I was just like, This is it. Yeah, this this yeah. is this is it. So that was it. And it was like a degree on a degree off the head yeah, angle. Yeah. It was that subtle. Jeez. And that's, that's all it is. That is the only difference between yeah, yeah. 
that pre-production and and it, and they are wildly different to ride wow. it's it's not it blows my mind how do you think anyone been. could get on and feel that i'm sure they could because really? yeah, it was yeah. that because it wasn't just a bit it's like that extreme. Nah, it's okay it was just like oh no this doesn't. Have no, you just no, 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 like feel it? I'd be like, right. <laughs> you don't want people sticking handle sets in there. <laughs> Max is just a test. No. So, so yeah. So that was it. So then, five <coughs> did us another run of another couple of frames with the slacker head angle. Yeah. Um, one went to lab testing past. The other frame is the bike I still ride. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that was it. And so we went for it. And so we we we, the, we got the green light from the lab testing mid July, but the joy of UK manufacturing, even with the bumps in the road that we they had with painting and things, we were in production in October. Wow, crazy. So I went from tearing my hair out, what's wrong, on the first on June, like the fourth of June, June right, fourth of June, yeah, to approved with another prototype within six weeks to production after another 12 weeks wow so that's the joy of imagine that's that the joy of UK production I know yeah You're tearing your hair out for months, months yeah months. and second guessing and cancelling things because it's yeah really really stressful yeah yeah oh, so yeah it's amazing so yeah that cool story that's though real yeah, cool. yeah, yeah real, so real that's cool. it so it, it to, but so to bookend uh, yeah so, so to bookend the the long shot story with that, you know, that that epiphany first ride, which was just like, this is completely right first time to like that like, like three week period before signing off the Rocket Max, going, what have I done? <laughs> it was just yeah, it was it was it was a lot. Wow. It was brilliant though. Wow, <laughs> wow. Uh, when it comes to specking them as well, then how do you go about doing that? What, specking a bike, yeah, specking the a frame. complete yeah, bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. specking the frame or specking a complete bike? Complete bike, really. Like what people can go on and buy right now is a complete. We don't we don't offer anything we wouldn't ride ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. Were you one of the first manufacturers to go with Cane Creek? There's no, a, we no, no. We we we're, we're no, because the, there's been some bigger manufacturers okay. going with like, you know, they have got some big OE fitment on okay. some on a couple of other brands, but um, we are one of their bigger customers, yes. uh, but we're not the top. Okay. I think we're probably their their biggest like sort of partner in terms of social media and marketing mm. and all of that kind mm. of stuff because we have a very you know sort of two way relationship, relationship with that, from yeah. that point of view. Cool. Um, no, the Cane Creek. There's part partly it, it's two things. When we were tiny. Back in, I mean, we're still small, but when we were like, when there was literally just the three of me, Paul, and Rich, yeah. back in 2015, and we were relaunching the the rocket, um, we needed a decent shock for it. And I'm, and whilst I'm sure the product is uh, is good, mm. it is really, really, really hard to get Shram or Fox to right. speak to you right. and offer you any kind of a half decent price when you're asking to buy 50 shocks yeah um yeah. They're, they're just not interested okay right they're a little bit better shram particularly are a lot better since zyro took over because we now have a uk oe rep through zyro right so they're, they're they're like a million times better than they were and we get decent pricing out of them now mm. we have slightly higher volumes now as well but back in 2015 it was like well, you know, it's quarter of a million euros, or we're not, you know, mm. we're not interested. So X Fusion, we're always happy to talk to us right. um, and do reasonable quantities for reasonable for us anyway. Mm. Um, and yeah, and Cane Creek were Cane Creek were keen. They sent us, the, you know, they they treated us like they treated us like grown ups, right? When Fair. you know, because it wasn't that we, you know. Mm. It wasn't that we were some tin pot operation. We were just small. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, you know. Yeah. Not everyone sells ten thousand. Probably done wonders for them as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, I hope so. Yeah, I feel um, like it would do. So the helm, yeah, yeah, thing and all that. Yeah. Stuff so, good. so they basically that you know, X Fusion gave us the option for some great forks at a great price, um, in the quantities we needed. Um, Cane Creek gave us a brilliant option for a high end, mm. like multi adjustable shock, um, in the quantities we needed. And the relationships just grew from there. So that so basically, we we, you know, 
you know what it's like in this industry. But pe- people buy from people. People buy from people, yeah. Um, and they, tri- you know, so we buy, you know, we buy from people who are who are happy to work with us. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. That's, that's cool. it. Yeah. Um, it was really nice. I went to visit Exhibition in Santa Cruz on yeah, yeah. their office there. Oh, yeah. and just like proper people, you could phone up and come for a, like a demo. Yeah. Yeah. Like here, it was, yeah, personable. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, exactly. People buy off people. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that's so for the suspension side of things. Again, it, it, we need flexibility because we assemble our bikes to order in the UK. They're not sitting in. We don't have complete bikes sitting in boxes like mm. a lot of these brands do. Right. We build a bike from a frame upwards. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we build every single one to order, even though even if it's a completely stock spec, that's not in a box. That's in boxes. Right. And oh, really? they are built. Every single bike is built to order. Your bike is built for you. Literally so, by hand. Yeah. Yeah. Hand That's finished. Cool. Hand finished. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than hand finished. <laughs> um, but hand built. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Assembled right here in Carver. Um, so it helps when we can deal with people who are happy to deal flexibly and in reasonable quantities. Mm-hmm. And then obviously Cane Creek bought the Helm fork out, which gave us this amazing high end fork option. Hope are super flexible on all of their colors and their headsets and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Shimano do us great pricing on, um, you know, they, they offered us an OE, you know, kind of an OE deal. Mm. Um, so again, good to work with them. And obviously now SRAM do, so we have their drive trains. Right. Um, WTB, and again, it's that whole thing. It's like, you know, some of these bigger tire brands that maybe are a bit more trendy, they don't, they're not interested in yeah. dealing with us, but WTB are absolutely brilliant. And the tires are brilliant. Yeah. Like, this is the thing. It's like, we wouldn't have... We <laughs> too wouldn't good, have apparently. <laughs> no, it's just it's too good. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit Ask controversial. Nick, uh, Hamilton about how good vigilantes are. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit controversial. For it's not my tire, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's never off my bike. <laughs> no. So, so yeah. So, and then we've got Hunt Wheels and, you know, yeah. and all of this kind of stuff. So, yeah, everyone we work with is, they're partners, they're not just su- the suppliers, yeah. they're partners. Yeah. Um, and like I say, um, nothing on our, nothing on the bikes is anything we wouldn't ride ourselves. If you come and see, come and look at any of the staff bikes, they mm. won't be like a bogo spec by any stretch of the imagination, but I guarantee you they will have WTB tires. They, yeah. will, they will have you know, Cane Creek suspension or Exfusion suspension, they'll probably have Hunt wheels on them. Got you. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you, you know, if you play the boss card, they've got titanium E wings cranks on them. <laughs> <laughs> you can just that every now and again. It's like a bad game of Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, so that that's, that's cool. And and how we spec the bikes after that is we we put the stock builds on there. But like I say, because we build everyone to order, it's no skin off our nose if you want Dior brakes on your XT bike or right. you want hope brakes on your SLX bike or you want you know um, you know almost whatever you almost want almost anything that's cool yeah. Yeah. Send, you know if you've got some favourite handlebars send them in we'll put them on your bike yeah. that's the worst yeah. thing if you get a bike not that I bought a bike brand new in a box but the idea of somebody taking a saddle and grips off a bike that's completely box fresh mm. and putting them in your spares box to yeah, it's true. Favorite, suddenly, favorite groups. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Why are you wasting that? Just, yeah. just tell us you don't want your saddle. We'll knock a fiber off or whatever it is. Yeah. And you can either send us yours or true, we true. Yeah, or we'll send it. Leave without. it off. Yeah. But yeah. it's you but know, don't waste anything. No, don't waste anything. It's no. so like that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's so much. It's so bad for the world, you yeah, know. Just 100%. all of this putting, putting. I was just thinking back to stuff. a Saracen. I bought ones that came with these grips on that were made out of concrete I think it's like a bit of <laughs> concrete. Spiky concrete. oh god they were awful you're yeah. just like why have you even put them on like no yeah. one's going to ride with it it's like yeah. you literally yeah. go around the car park you've got blisters like what are we doing yeah. just leave them off do you know what I mean yeah. or put something good on for yeah. the sake of Some 10 quid tape. yeah just put anything on yeah so yeah and we're trying to get cool. we're trying to get a bit better with that I mean grips are a really personal thing so actually you know even though we spec the cotton grips they're, they're proper lock-ons mm. and they're you know there, you might like them, you might not. Um, yeah, yeah. But if you if you if you absolutely sure you're not going to like them, just let us know. Mm. Like I say, we'll knock a few quid off and put leave them in the leave them on the shelf for yeah. someone else who'll will appreciate them. That's cool. Um, we you know we're updating the cockpits a bit, so we've got fabric saddles and rev grips as well. Oh, cool. And Botec pedals, all the touchy bits on your bike. Yeah, touch points you can really personalise. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And they'll make a massive difference. Yeah. Mm. 
and uh, yeah, so you can buy the posh, you, know, you can buy the fabric saddle with the tie rails, as you know. So because I know a lot of people like those saddles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, quite a few people here don't get on with the Kotick saddle. Right. I do. So okay. I gave Boss Card <laughs> a go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fabric gives some amazing saddles. You should get a fabric saddle. Put it on. It's really comfy. <laughs> so so yeah, so you can do that. Or if you or we do the WTV Diva saddles as well. Okay. For so for women's yeah, that's yeah. a no cost option. Cool. So uh, cool. so yeah, so we we try and where we can we try and do do what we can. Yeah. And like you say, if you've got your favourite stuff, just just send it. Mm. I mean, particularly on the roadside with the escapades actually, that's much more because people, like, yeah. people are very people are very, about very, very picky about their handlebars, particularly and and saddle. But then you you know you're a lot more you're a lot less dynamic on a road bike you are kind of sat mm. so it kind of it does make a bit more of a difference I okay. quite like it in a workshop because I get these handlebars out of box whoa what are these yeah so we've been doing a little bit of that and, it, and we're, we're happy to do it it's um, we'd much rather do that than yeah know that it's kind of waste going in the yeah. bin yeah well also as well uh, as well it's that whole thing it's like we're Excuse me, sorry. Beer we drink, is we drink a big burp of beer. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. uh, I gassy. told you it's coming. Yeah. It's, cool. um, <laughs> it's that whole thing. Is like now we're a direct selling brand. Um, you know, the bike comes in this, you know, in this in this beautiful big box, and it's got all of these like you know, we've got these custom designed imports, mm. inserts, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Geeky <laughs> aside, it's award winning. Yeah, it's legitimately, a, legitimately really? like at the cardboard Oscars kind of no thing. Way. Our bike box is <laughs> legitimately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well done, boys. <laughs> we didn't draw it. Some really clever yeah, people. Yeah, in the box yeah. yeah, the cardboard factory did. But we, but yeah, we. So we've got this, and and we want people to pull their bike out and be just stoked. That's the whole iPhone factor, right? Of like opening the box. <laughs> have you ever heard the story about how long it took to design the box? It's like it's crazy. So, you know, right. just have you ever opened an iPhone and box? You lift it up and it, it just falls out. Really yeah, a little bit of suction is like just yeah. the perfect amount. It took like oh yeah, yeah. years to get that <laughs> correct. It's crazy. It's a cool story. But it's a similar thing, right? First yeah. impression, like that's your yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. That's your first thing with the bike, isn't it? It's yeah, like I, it out I the mean box. stuff like that. I mean, we, we we do what we can, but again, we're a small brand, so we try and we try. You know, everyone wants to do the surprise and delight thing a little bit, mm. and we try and do a little bit. If you come and do a factory collection, you'll get your suspension set up we'll put your pedals on we'll, you know, and all of that kind of stuff so yeah. we try and do a little bit of it but yeah some of the stuff that these big big brands do for that kind of thing like there's a, there's a might be Porsche there's a big car brand where there's a guy or even like a department whose job it is to make sure that the cars across, every Porsche sounds like a Porsche wow as in, like, you know, it's not just, like, the the, uh, the noise engineers go, yeah, that sounds pretty good. It's like, it's got to sound, wow. they've got to sound like, they all kind of sound congruous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, like, yeah that's interesting. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. you know, it's different. those big, like, and that's that kind of Apple, like, yeah, you know, yeah, it is, yeah. Moment. I remember there's a thing with Jaguar, isn't there, with the door shut in and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, How yeah, the yeah. door clicks too and stuff. Which, yeah, if you want to go down that rabbit hole, it's... If oh, we man, have you, if you spent, time and money yeah, to oh, do mate, that, yeah, well, also, we would. But, you know, if someone spent 80 grand on their car, they want the, they want the door you to close sound, nicely. Sound right yeah. and the door to <laughs> shut. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, that's pretty so, true. So, um, we do work on what we can with what we've got. Yeah. yeah. A couple of years to get the whole tss yeah. as you lift the bike out of the box like an iPhone box. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of scrape, it's a bit of scraping a cardboard, I suppose. But. Can we put a tiny little speaker or oh, some sort of imagine. Bluetoothy thing so you lift it and it's like, I don't know, Star Wars. Fan thing. Get a John Williams score. Like. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> dry ice. Open the box. Oh, <laughs> Dubs oh, play yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Party poppers and stuff. <laughs> Good idea. That's cool. You can have right. that. Okay. Cut us out. Obviously, I wanted to go down a bit of a different rabbit hole actually now. Yeah, yeah. If that's all right. Uh, we did get tons of listener questions, which I'll probably go through if that's cool mm. as well. But the marketing side. So you've got this bike, which is designed, ready to go. Yeah. Do you almost then hand over to the lovely gentleman on my left and be like, right, what can we do to market this bike? to sell it or how does that all work because this is I think super interesting because without you telling the world it'd still be still be sat here so, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> this is it's interesting we, it's very it's very collaborative okay yeah, because one of the things I've realised that I actually really enjoy about this job is getting involved in that side of things I think your marketing as a company has always been really strong as well I mean go back to like the rocket right yeah yeah rocket man 
Everyone remembers Rocket Man. Rocket Man. <laughs> don't they? Everyone remembers. I don't know yeah, if it's because we're so like... About, but that, that is partly about getting the right people as well because yeah. that's that was all Joe, Jobo. Right. Still City Media. Yeah, yeah. The, um, and that's, that, and that's, that, that's now, that's kind of where I had that creative side of it mm. is, you know, I originally hired Rich as a mechanic but that wasn't the re- that was the job we had kind of available. Yeah, we needed yeah. some extra hands, but I knew I wanted Rich Creatively. on the company because he was so different mm. and had this such a different energy and and, and cool. talent compared to what me and Paul had. Yeah, um, because we're very kind of straight engineering sort of down the line kind of thing. And mm. like, I think what you've achieved as well with the brand is. Um, from an, out, from an outside perspective looking, it's very personable. I love that. And again, there's an element of me knowing yeah. 90% of people who work here. But I think even if I didn't, I'd be like, oh, you know, you know Sam's going to be doing his thing in the van and you've got like cartoon images of him or whatever. Yeah. There's always like funny videos going on. I think it's a super personable thing. And I feel like part of the company, even if you don't own a bike, if you follow you know, you guys on social media or on Instagram or whatever, it's always engaging. You always like want to see what you're up to. Well, that's all him. So yeah, but good. I think that's a huge, <laughs> dude, it's a huge thing. Like it, it's really difficult to do that, to to not be, too not cheesy, but like to you know almost it called white. No- yeah, corporate and like just a bit like oh white noise, but you keep it like perfect balance of lightheartedness, but then factual as well of like and cool images and like I think you're just nailing it with the social I really Thanks do so like probably one of the most exciting bike brands to follow oh, if not oh, the most that exciting is, that for is sure such a nice thing oh, to say no you do you're killing it that side of it's like that, on point like, so that is so much yeah, rich. Yeah. Rich, rich, was, rich is a pro photographer by trade so he brings all that side of it yeah. but, but literally he was the one like we, we sat down at what was it we, were, we went to a cafe didn't you you were like we, we, did we go to um, Bregazzi's we sat, we sat outside Bregazzi's and you were like yeah, I want to. I was thinking, you know, if we could, do, if I could do a little bit more stuff each week, I've got these ideas about this. I, I think, I think we ought to get an Instagram account. I was like, what's Instagram? <laughs> really? <laughs> Just like five years ago. Or something like that. <laughs> <It's> literally, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's literally all here. Yeah, it's crazy, man. You're doing a really. I think yeah, great job. Yeah, I think anyone out there probably agree that if you're not following these guys, make sure you're on it because it's usually pretty funny as well. It's not like the squarest place to work either. It's no. quite fun, so it's not like. Of making it up yeah and it's I think you're always like too. open to doing stuff too like whenever I'm like oh let's do this pretty much the first person I go to is like yeah, I do <laughs> you want to do this <laughs> so I think being open to stuff and not, not being corporate is a huge advantage as well isn't it being smaller and you can just adapt and do cool stuff I mean, just if you want, even if you aren't corporate just being open to stuff yeah yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, that's a fair point. Whatever, so I know you, I've got a bike know, in yeah, a minute, yeah. which is from a very corporate or, company, but they're like, yeah, cool. I'll send your bike. Boom. There it is. Yeah. Exactly. They're so, open to you. So yeah. It's the yeah. same thing. You've just got to try stuff mm. all yeah. the time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So when did you start? How did the idea start formulating for the Rocket Max in particular? Because oh, the video you did time, was brilliant, right? Really, really short one. Following the tube. Oh, that's really recently. Yeah. Yeah, um, so no, I was launch. thinking like the launch. Oh, sorry. The Talk launch, about the launch was, as well. Just that one. It was just that like one, the bike, hey, the bike of the year. No the pink bike pink photo, photo of the, of the year, year was from the Rocket Max shoot. Oh wow! Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> because it had taken so, it had gone so quick from like ah, we need to get this bike out. Yeah. Get it built. Get it out. We got them, and we're like, we need to start selling them yesterday. Quick. What can we do? And I was like, oh, it's quite sunny. <laughs> Let's go to Stanage tonight. And. The three, me, Will, and Cy went up to Stanage and just shot a quick riding really? snapshots. And it was like, oh, this is really nice. We've got another half hour. Well, it's good. The sun's going to be going in half an hour, so let's just stay out. Mm-hmm. It was brutal. I thought, I think it's going to be nice tomorrow. Let's go to Winnets and find something up there. And went up there and shot that. Crazy. Worked out quite well. For everyone listening, we're looking at the photo of the year, pink bike photo of the year from 2018. That'll be, won't it? Yeah. 2018. 19? It was 18. That we shot it. It was 18 yeah. we shot it. It was the two, the photo of the year 2019. It was last year's photo. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. okay. Because um, they're doing it again now. Yeah, they're just, so they're just again just now. Yeah, 2019 so yeah. or not? Two, no, 2020. That'll be there 2020, but yeah, the photo yeah. is from the year yeah, before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, yeah, it was, it was, so yeah, so it was September 2018. So Rich went and did this incredible shoot. Um, and suddenly we've got this, all of these image, mm-hmm. images. And that's not something we. Well, I mean, we obviously always try and get cool images, but just the weather was just with us those days, wasn't it? It was ridiculous. Well, that morning I got up and I was not quite down the valley. I went, oh, it's a bit foggy. Oh, this is this might be a bust. And it's winter, so it's still going to be nice. Mm. 
drove all the way up from my house 20 minutes up the road and I was like oh god it's foggy it's foggy it's foggy and I got to the top of the pass I could see all the stars and it was still dark I'm like, oh, oh it's going to work <laughs> this is going to be brilliant I know exactly what's going to happen in about 20 more minutes wow right and Will was there and we turned around and walked out and that's the view that we got insane isn't it such a good photo oh, it was so lovely crazy good photo it was just nice yeah. being up there yeah, yeah for sure but we've, for got, sure. we've got a whole app if you go onto our Flickr yeah um, if you go onto our Flickr and like I don't know whether you can search albums if you can uh, maybe yeah Probably. there's a Rocket Max album on our on the Kotick Limited Kotick LTD Flickr mm -hmm. suite and it's got all of the photos from those two right. shoots I didn't know public had access to that because I looked for those images that you did of me and I was like, oh, yeah, there's like 150 people. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a, okay, I didn't know it was public. Cool. Yeah. All right, we'll link to it. We keep secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I didn't know it was public. No, it's all, yeah. it's all there. So, um, okay. so, yeah, so that was that. And then I, I mean, it was super fast, this one. Do you almost then rush to get it? magazine content well the thing what with this one is that we were so because we've been waiting so long to get it into production and we needed to make the UK made announcement about it because it was the first UK made frame yeah. and there's all this kind of stuff um, but we were you know we were probably about six weeks away from actually having full you know production frames in stock so we need you know we were generating looking to generate orders um, normally we try and hold off for a couple of weeks and and get out to the press and do some mm. press rides so they've got they've got some photos they've got, they've yeah, got yeah, a bit yeah. of you know, that. so what so normally what you see like with our recent flare max launch um you know for the two or three weeks before that i was going around you know going around going for a ride with people they were getting some so what happened was is that we launched the bike and then a bunch of websites had some first rides and then over the next month a couple of magazines had some first right. rides and it all kind of this was just literally, oh, yeah. we got the photo shoots, he was processing them, I was writing the press, press release, and we, we just, I think we might even have sent it to the, ma the Kotick mailing list before we sent it to the press. Really? We were just like... I think it was the same day. Just, yeah. <laughs> we just... Really? Like that's, wow. uh, that's like half seven, eight in the morning or whatever it was. Yeah. That yeah. might be earlier than that. It, the whole thing took 45 minutes, wow. maybe, yeah. from like, leaving the car, walking out, get the shot back in the car straight to work and we got a sandwich on the way <laughs> and we're in work by nine o'clock like tapping away processing pictures Jeez. we're always back on the spanners like, it, wow. it, was it, it wasn't a big it was a hard. hectic and you had a stock sat here no no no, no. no we, we had stock being made being we made, being right. made. Okay, so you could pre-order the bike but almost. the thing was the thing was is that we were the, the, the reason why we had a bit of pressure I, I felt we had a bit of pressure was is that Obviously, we'd been doing long shot bikes for nearly a year at that point. The Flare Max and the Rocket had been launched. We'd sold off the previous Rocket Maxes mm -hmm. um, um, in like August with the view to launching in September. Right. So everyone knew that there was going to be a Rocket Max coming in the new long shot, you know, this incredible yeah. new long shot geometry that we were getting such good reviews about on the other bikes. So we were like and we were beginning to get like customers were like look we know you're doing a new bike but I need a new bike right you know like we yeah, were getting yeah, to the yeah. point where we I'm were gonna beginning, buy to, we could, we were beginning to lose people right right so what we were just like and then there was a there was a bunch there was a there was a whole bunch of bumps in the road with the painting okay that's the that's the that's the that's the secret about UK production of bikes actually you know, welding them, cutting all the tubes, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of skill involved in that. But mm. the big, massive stumbling block to actually getting more production in the UK is finishing. Right, right. Matt and Callum were fighting the finishing the whole time. Where, we, where are they? Is, where is the Five Land. Oh, they, yeah, right, they, okay. so they set up a paint shop to oh, get okay. things done. They, so they, they, they paint painted, they're all painted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is. Yeah, so, the end, don't they? Yeah, yeah so, it's the same place. Yeah. So they're all... so. <clears throat> So they had a lot. So there was a lot of bumps in the road getting that sorted. And they finally got it sorted. We've got the frames done. Sent us these. We built them. We shot them, and we just launched them. We were just like, we've just got to tell people about this. It's yeah. been too long. We're losing the moment, you know. So and sometimes that's it. It's, just, it's a feel thing. 
Yeah. For just, sure. There was a there's momentum there. There's just momentum. Keep going. We've just got to. We've actually yeah, why just delay got to do this. It? Yeah. Why delay it? There's no need. Yeah. Is it? I did feel sorry for the magazines because in the middle of this we had the Soda Max, which was the titanium. Oh yeah. Twenty nine hard tail. Yeah. And that was the following week. I and think we'd I'd almost have... forgotten about them. And then I get a phone call. Went. You got. We've got all your frames at the port. Could you pay him for it? Oh my god, yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, so yeah, so the fri- so the Friday <laughs> the fri- the third Friday of September, we launched this. Yeah. And again, we just mugged the press with it because there was no heads up, there was nothing. We were just like, <laughs> you know, public, everything, fire, there's a bunch of photos, amazing new bike, UK made, massive story. Which is great in a way though, because everyone's scrambling and to everyone's try and like, get the and first going, bike. It's a, and, and, like, and, the, and they're all like, it's three o'clock on a Friday afternoon, guys. <laughs> and then literally we did the same thing the following week. I was in finale with the team at the EWS. <laughs> they rang me on the Wednesday and said, the sodas are arriving. I was like, you've got to be no kidding me. Way. He does another hero photo shoot. You should see the photos of that bike. One week later, he's doing it again with like light magicianing with this bike. <laughs> and I'm like... Well, we got them. We better sell them. So I'm there like Friday afternoon. The game, three o'clock, like, you know, in Italy, in the flat. I come, come back from practicing with Che and Swinney and Jordan. It's like, I'm just, what are you doing now? I'm just going to launch a bike. No <laughs> way. Yeah. And then we did it again. And actually, we got some, we did get a, a bit of kickback off that going, come on, guys. It's some like, people had a laugh. Some right? people this had a laugh a about it. Like, Cutting it. Because just was like fully just. Three o'clock like, on a Friday. Every week. Yeah. Like, every week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's um, hilarious. We did get a bit of kickback from it, which which I I, I did see. But ultimately, we, we had... Sometimes you've got no options. Sometimes mm. you've just got this stuff and it's there and you've got to tell people about it because you've got to sell it and yeah. you haven't got time to yeah. go to the press and you haven't got time to do it all as you would hopefully like definitely, to do it. Definitely, Um We're taking yeah. bets on how many we'd sell over the weekend because we've given it maybe... 20 minutes before we <laughs> shut the doors and we're like right it's the it weekend. was literally we're Just on the go. phone I'm in we're the like, fo- I'm no one's going to have seen this we'll, yeah. we'll come back to maybe a couple of orders and we had dozens really wow. yeah oh, wow. wow I think we sold wow. we, we sold like you know this is like a nearly two grand type yeah, hardtail yeah. frame we've just launched like the like the rocket map the week before um, so we're like you know Cotic customers are going to be pretty you know, wallets are going to be pretty tired mm, at mm, this point. And we mm. just like, and we still had like a bunch of, like, wow. wow. That was, was good. Fun. It was wild. It was a wild couple of weeks. Cause obviously, like, like I say, I was in, I was at, I was out there living the dream in finale <laughs> with my race team as well. It was just, it was a crazy week. It was a crazy wow. week. It's amazing. That's cool. Good stories. I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> Stuff that, again, without having long form, well, it's hard to, your mailing list, your mail would be really long if you told all that <laughs> yeah, story. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's also 2018, so it was that mega heat wave. Oh, yeah. That year. Yeah, so it yeah. was just, everything felt very up. Really? Really hot, physically, yeah. and yeah. exciting, and Good. busy. And, yeah, and like I say, you just got momentum, you yeah. started to go with it, hadn't you? Just well, it was, it. well the, the other thing was, is that I think through that year, we launched a new bike every six weeks on average right. throughout the whole year. Yeah. So, 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 it was, you have so by that, that point, well. we were just like, do it, sell it, get it out there. We just, we just, we just, we, we were almost just like, yeah, there's a new one. Just tell just people it. about it. Yeah, let's do it. What magazines? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, we I did try. take it around to go see them. We, we did. Like, well, this is it. Yeah. Afterwards, stuff. like we were like, well, the thing, the thing that happened was, is that we, we, we got a couple of requests to actually get it into group tests, which right. was really, really good. Yeah. It was, it just worked. It, it, we, we dropped very lucky with a couple of very accommodating people. Um, so we got an awesome couple of write-ups anyway, which was brilliant. Um, because the, th- the flip side of it is, again, being a small company, there's an element of capacity involved as well. Mm. It takes a lot of work to like go and go all around the country oh, and yeah, go yeah. and see all of these guys. 100%. So if we haven't got the time to do it and we've just got to tell people about this stuff, sometimes I just have to make a decision as the business owner that we've just got to do it now. Yeah, yeah. And the thing we've always got on our side is the demo tour. Because we told yeah. people about these bikes on the Friday, they could ride them on the Saturday. Wow. That's the idea. They're on the, that. They're on yeah, the van. Yeah, for sure. For so, sure. yeah, so we, so, yeah like we, haven't demo to get it, we haven't managed to get it to the press and there's that wider audience about telling more people about Kotick who maybe haven't considered us before but actually if you're already following us as a brand and you're at you know and you're coming to one of the demos mm. you know that bike that was in that photo on that Thursday morning somebody rode that on the Saturday yeah imagine that again world first 
non-cutting staff ride at that bike. That's cool. Yeah. That's so, really cool. That, so that was the yeah. thing we've always got on our side with these things is mm. like these photo bikes are the demo bikes. So the moment they're out of the studio, the moment they're off that shoe, yeah. they're in the back of the they're van. In the back of the van. Yeah, no, to be honest, it didn't need a big wash. It was covered in sheep shit. Was it really? Yeah. So they didn't covered in stoke. Straight to demo. Yeah. Yeah. Covered in stoke. <laughs> stoke. <laughs> Couldn't get it off. <laughs> <laughs> Scrubbing for hours. <laughs> that was good fun. Oh, it's so cool. much sheep shit, honestly. Oh my god, that, you didn't tell me about <laughs> there was that. There tons. Oh my god. Look at the last picture on that Flickr album. You look closely and go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Will loves it though, doesn't he? he oh, he it. lives for that. Yeah. Yeah. He's <laughs> <It's> only <laughs> been close as mouth when he was riding. <laughs> Better than me, though. <laughs> oh man. That's <laughs> all good. Amazing. Uh, so, yeah. Right, let's get, we're going to run through. I know we're going to be relatively time sensitive with this one. Yeah. So we're going to run through, I put it out for the first time actually doing it behind the bike, put it out to people to ask you guys some questions. Um, so um, some of these are really good as well. And I think Rich, you're going to be able to like elaborate on some of these answers. So if that's okay. So I'll throw them out there and we can just go from there really. Okay. Um, so the first one, uh, at Eric underscore Knowles. Uh, how much does it take to start and keep a bike brand going time-wise and money-wise? We don't have to go down into the financial, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I mean, probably best elaborating a little bit on my, like the team and how it's grown a little bit as well, because well, you know, when I first became yeah. conscious of Cotty, there was you, you three, I think. Yeah. yeah. So perfect. Okay. Um, I started Cotic in my front bedroom with a 25 grand loan. Um. <laughs> Again, for people listening, that's actually a good story as well. Uh, very first episode of the podcast, we go through, we went yeah. through all of that yeah, yeah, yeah. about literally from day one, didn't we? Yeah. Um, I think it's like three it's and a half years ago. Video as well on our website, the fifteen year yes, history. Yes, the fifteen. Yeah. Years if you ago. just go to click on the about page on the website, it's like the first thing you see is fifteen years. And also, years people listening, show description. Yeah. There'll be a link cool. there for you as well. Um, okay. So yeah, so that's that's a real, uh, real top and bottom of it. Mm what it takes to keep it going um getting good people good people yeah good people how do you find that out of interest being a you know like surrounding yourself with people surrounding yourself with good people it's about well it's like i said i first employed rich because i needed a mechanic but i employed rich specifically because he's rich mm. because Not. he brought something for he Not. brought something to <laughs> He brought he, he brought brought something to the business yeah. that we did not have an art at degree, all. an art degree. <laughs> Nip, we're outnumbered by the buggers now. It's really. <laughs> have you got an art degree? Yeah, man. Classic. So is Hannah. So is Darren. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, yeah. No, properly. It's, wow. it's upsetting. I'm outnumbered now. Wow. Okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> sciences and humanities, but is it basically a BA? Yeah. So wow, that's four of us. Yeah. 50%. Smart group over here. I'm way out of um, my depth. Smart group. So no, I, bet, of, I barely got a GCSE. Part, part of it, so part of it's organic, as in, like Rich, Rich approached me for, for a job. Yeah. And like I say, whilst mechanicing was what I had at the time, I employed Rich because I wanted him on my team mm. um, for all of those other, for all of the other things that I didn't even, you know, that have all become apparent, but I didn't even know about at the time. Yeah. So it takes known unknowns. Uh, known unknowns. Um, it, so it takes it takes energy and passion, and um, what makes that easier is that these days, being a slightly bigger team because there's eight of us now. Right. Um, I made a conscious decision with a bit with a well, bit of help, a lot of help from a business mentor of about five years ago to put a plan in place to grow the business. Mm. Partly because I wanted it to be more secure and I wanted to sell a broader range of bikes. But one of the things I love now, I spent the first 10 years of this basically working out of my front bedroom. Yeah. You know, and whilst I had a, co you know, you know, for the, for, a, for the last couple of years of that 10 years, I had Rich, and for most of that 10 years, I had Paul. Mm. Paul still works from home, like most of the time, and he's on the end of the phone. It's. It's quite a solitary existence. It's quite. Okay. It worked at the time. My kids were real young. I got to be really involved in their upbringing, yeah, which yeah. was awesome. A um, lot of flexibility, all of that kind of stuff. But now, if I haven't, if I'm not feeling the stoke <laughs> that day, I know that there's at least seven other people 
one of them's going to be up. Mm, that's cool. One of them's going to be, I'm going to come down here and one of them is going to make me feel better about being at work today. Yeah, that's cool. And one of them's going to have had an idea. Yeah. And one yeah. of them's going to be excited about something. And mm. that's, man, that, that is just... That's rad. Worth. I feel like you've got, again, from the outside looking in, like a super loyal team as well it seems like I know Will is for sure like, <laughs> blood in blood out yeah I, you know again like Will who builds your bikes for you you know yeah. he's one of the mechanics he's a good friend of mine as you know and uh, we've got time for more of that. yeah of course we have uh, you're a really good friend of mine and we gave him shit for years he didn't have a full time job but he loved to hear that much that's what he wanted to do and it's like dude get a job it's like no I'm alright because he started like two days a week maybe like, or, two, day, two, two days two days right two, two or three like, days get a job a week, dude yeah. nah Love it. <laughs> so I just think that, like, well, you know, it's, it's, and, and, and like, he came and, up to us saying, yeah. Can I get a job? Right. right. Well, yeah, he's an awesome man, Will. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, well, right. that, we got super busy and Rich was going on holiday. So we needed, um, yes, we needed some mechanic cover and he started doing like two or three days a week and then never left. Right. But again, he's, br- he's yeah. brilliant. He's brilliant yeah. at what he does. And, and, I, and the thing, like, Rich was part time for a long time. Um, you know, Will was part time for a long time. Um, you know, Darren is currently part time, but aiming for full time is mm. that's the thing with a small business as it grows is that I really appreciate, I massively, massively appreciate the patience and the loyalty and the commitment that these guys showed me because I appreciated that I, I you know, I gave them, I gave them a full time job as soon as I could. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It was, it's not always as simple as that. I feel like as well, one thing I've become a bit more conscious of is like. You know, I've been guilty in the past of having a job and not really been all there. Do you know what I mean? Been like, oh, definitely one of them where I, I, I wouldn't say I took the piss, but some days I'd be like, oh, I just can't be arsed today. I'm just not going to do anything. But behind the scenes, there's always someone yeah. struggling to pay your wages. And I think as you grow older and maybe personally, like getting more involved in business, yeah. you realise that there's like a lot of stress around that. Like somewhere along the line, someone is fighting for your wage and it's the realization of that yeah. i think sometimes as well is but one thing i've always but one thing i've always tried to be for better or worse because it helps me deal with the pressure of that situation is I'm, i've always been very open with everyone about yeah. that situation yeah because the thing about being a small team is that every single one of us can help make a sale mm. Mm. so if we you know so if something goes south and we're having you know a bit of a tight month um, I'm usually relatively open about that. Yeah. But it's normally in the context of what can we do? Right, yeah. yeah. It's not, not just, here's a problem, it's not, like, let's yeah, find a like, solution let's, to let's, this little problem. Yeah, yeah, and normally it's about <clears throat> selling more stuff or coming up with ideas, but it will be... So it helps me spread that load as well mm. because I know that I can... It's not just all on you. Yeah. Although the book stops there. Yeah, you yeah, can, for sure. Yeah. But it's about having a chat about it and people coming up with ideas and having people like Rich and yeah. so you guys do like a Monday thing is that right Monday meeting yeah Monday is that right? meeting yeah. Monday huddle cool <laughs> alright yeah we should start huddling though Monday huddle <laughs> that's the sax one Monday huddle huddles and cuddles Monday huddle all done virtually it's mental yeah <laughs> it's so, a little weird but it's good everyone's on the same page we know what yeah. we're all aiming for right but really, yeah. well what about you because you've got like what it takes for you is being like first thing in the morning you have to find a find an insta post and oh, yeah. feel a bit creative that day and well, that's, that's all right. sometimes it, it can be tough that though yeah i need to work out a better way over christmas you can line them up and yeah schedule them but usually it's just like it doesn't feel quite right because we are small enough and it's not a massive imposition to put something up because it's bikes and it's mm. fun i mm. like bikes i want to think about it first thing in the morning <laughs> yeah i'm making coffee I'm like, what can i post today so it's generally relevant and some of it obviously is akin to what you're doing here as if you've got an offer on or if you've got you yeah. must have got some sort of like right we need to promote this yeah here's some content a, for it but it's not all the time yeah that's the thing i generally i leave it I mean, I, I mean i actually leave the choice of the post and the wording of the post completely to rich i i you know that's hmm. you know there's no point i um, there's no point me micromanaging that yeah um but I don't think I've been pulled up too many times on anything. No, you're like a... It's you're like an... Go on. It's a compliment. I'm just going to try and figure out how to word it. You're like the Ollie Wilkins of bike brands, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, man. Because his, cap, his captions a are lot. classic, and your, yours are like always yeah. quite funny as well, a bit <laughs> tongue-in-cheek and a bit like... No, but, but, but also they're... 
that, that Rich puts a lot of feeling and a lot of yeah. And that's what I'm trying to say. A lot of feeling in it, yeah. And um, personality to it. Personality like, and, yeah. and you know and kindness into that. And that's there's there's not enough of that in this mm. world. I, I I quite often will read the Cotic Post, particularly when they're ones that feel you know a bit more feeling about it. You know, like stuff like Mental Health Day and things like yeah. that. And I will be I'll be proud to have been associated mm, with that mm. post that he's put that up on behalf of my brand because that's, cool. that's important yeah so i don't so whilst we'll say yeah if we've got an offer on if we've got a new bike to launch or we're doing hardtail week or something like that there will be there might be something on a monday morning that says right this week we need to push this thing mm. but it's not every week and i certainly don't choose the post that's cool cool yeah, it's fun solid that great uh da, 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 da. Got it. At Finn C7, how do you separate your brand from the rest and how do you make your brand look cool? Are you cool? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If you, you want think to... you're cool, I don't know if you are cool. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think I'm that cool. Let, yeah, if you know how to be cool, let us know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, the, there's not that much separation in the bike industry. If you really boil it down and like oh you ride this brand oh you ride that brand it's still generally a nice person mm. who likes bikes so that's two things you've probably got in common yeah. straight away yeah I think oh well, your, your head you angles are a different degree to mine and oh I don't think we can be friends like, <laughs> yeah I, I, that doesn't really wash so being different is it's, I'm not trying to be different or trying to make Kotick different it's mm. just being who we are quite transparent and honest yeah and if that looks different then then that's something mm. but it's not forced cool so i think that and that, i think that's for <coughs> bikes as well like i don't we didn't do we didn't do long shot geometry to be different we did it because we did we tried something and it was better and we were excited about it yeah and ultimately we want to build better bikes for us and then build better bikes for our customers yeah and that's yeah. Like, yeah. like if you have, if you do go to that about page to look at the thing the first line is it's like you know we want to build our dream bikes that's mm. that was how it started i wanted this particular bike yeah, yeah, yeah. and i built it and then you're probably going to find some like other people who think it's their dream bike as well mm. doesn't mm. have to be a load of them we sell you know you know we sell about a thousand bikes a year so yeah, yeah. um you know but um so yeah so we do stuff do stuff with authenticity Okay. that's the key you've okay. got to be authentic we don't do steel to be different we do it because we believe it's the best material for the bikes that we build okay. we like its properties because of the ride feel because of the toughness because of the sustainability aspect the recyclability hmm. um, so yes they look a bit different but it's not for the sake of being different it's okay. because we believe we believe in it hmm. So we don't do it to diff that's not a diff it is a differentiator between us and other brands, but it's not the reason why we do it. Right. Right. Um yeah. That's so cool. um fun fact. America's our second largest mark country for the podcast. Mm. UK, America. So you're heading over to Seattle for the first time. Yeah. What's that about? What's that about? Um, <laughs> I'm oh, throwing that man. one out there. I want to know because it's exciting. I think. It is exciting. It's super exciting. Um, I because dual rules and that's what he's after. <laughs> see, it's just stop it. I'm not racing the dual. Yeah, you Nick. heard it here first. <laughs> I think okay. it was Nick Hamilton. Right? Side turner <laughs> races. See after dual. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I might Me roll too. down it after like after they've finished or something. I'm not Drawing. Gonna, I am not going up there and finding myself drawn against bloody Luca Shaw. Like, <laughs> Bye Luca! <laughs> Let me know how it goes. <laughs> it's a good press, man. It's a good oh, press. Oh, man. <sighs> anyway. Anyway. Um, so I wanted to go to Seattle because uh, because we're interested in we're interested in the US market. It's the biggest. If you're selling, if you're selling mountain bikes, it is still the biggest market in the world. So, it's worth. You know, we're getting a bit of 
coverage there. We're, you know, we do a proportion of our sales, you know, a small oh, really? proportion of our sales over there already. Sent one right. to Alaska last week. No way. Um, yeah. Really? So the street view was depressing. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, you, you go quit look, Google of the house and go, oh, that's a nice house. Spin 180 from this cul de sac and there's just mountains <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> oh, that's why you live there. It oh, was wow. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Oh, depressing for you, not depressing yeah, yeah, for him. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's living the life. <laughs> beautiful. No, so. So no, so Sea Otter was just like this thing where um, I wanted to go and see, get a bit more of an idea of what the market is like over there, what people are riding, um, put some names to faces because we have some contacts with with Pink Bike, with yeah. Vital, with a couple of the other outlets. Um, so just that was the idea. Um, and then, and I've been meaning to, and I wanted to go and visit Cane Creek um, who are in Western North Carolina. Right. Um, because, I, well, I, I, I love those guys and I wanted to go out there and visit visit with them and there's a scene over there, see what the scene's like over there. Again, it's all part of this site. Because there's like a bunch of bike companies in, in Asheville where, they, oh, where really? they're based. Oh, right. It's like I-9 are based there. Okay. Uh, Thompson are just down the road. Like there's a massive Fox Fox USA service centres. Right. Like, that. It's like there's, there's a lot of stuff in, in mm. that part of the United States. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, so it, t- it was turning into this bit of a trip and then, um, I sort of realized I was going to be at the show for like the whole four days. I was like, oh, I wonder how much a stand is. Um, and it's, it turns out it wasn't a massive amount of money. So cool. I pulled out my fucking button again. <laughs> Good press. Press <laughs> How are you going to sell though? What What are you going to do? Uh, we're just going to, we've got a th- we've got a three meter by three meter pitch. We're going to take an easy up. Oh, we're take sh- it out we're there, ship you? a couple of pallets of idea, pallets yeah. over with 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 a few bikes and some backdrop, and we're going to do some demo rides. And I'm not going to race jewel. And <laughs> <laughs> you said it. that's rad. Nice one. So yeah, really so cool. I thought really, it's really one cool. of those things like seeing as I'm there. Yeah. So people listening to the states, make sure you head over. Yeah, Wednesday, yeah, anyway. yeah. Sea Otter's like sixteenth to the nineteenth. It's in Monte. It's at Laguna Seca Racetrack. At, right. Uh, what month? The sixteenth to the nineteenth of April. Oh, is it? Okay. Perfect. Um, so yeah, so yeah, if you're there, come along. Stand Y eight. Um, we're gonna have some bikes to ride. So um, that's yeah. really cool, man. Really, really cool. Love that. But Love if you're that. not there, because size racing jewel in California. Yeah. You thought well, we've got our own oh, mini oh, bucket yeah. button. The jewel. First announcement. We've got our spring party, April the 18th, oh. the same day as Sea of the Jewel. The jewel. La- see it live on the TV here then. No, no. better than that. A no. water bowl classic. It's like Sea Otters, but it's UK. Based. <laughs> 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 Those are the cuttings. Really <laughs> the water bowl classic. Amazing. We hired the field across the road, like 100 metres from the front door of our workshop. Yeah. Set up a jewel track there. Um, got <laughs> Big ravey drum and bass DJ all day. Really? Oh yeah. Oh man. We'll get beers in, fish I'm... and chips with people, demo rides up the loop. It's a really nice day. Right. Plus we're gonna have jewel racing. Amazing. I'm, I'm going to California and I'm visiting San Francisco for the first time and they've actually got me like full FOMO. Like I'm <laughs> that like, is cool. <laughs> yeah. I like I that. cannot believe that. Like, what a Vol Classic. <laughs> what a Classic, April the eighteenth in Carver, <laughs> oh, Derbyshire. That is trip. class. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's class. They're going to have that on the big screen at Sea Otter. <laughs> That's the other way around. <laughs> Kyle Strait will be here. <laughs> Racing Jewel. Imagine if they were going to have Sea Otter's played out. It's going to come. Yeah, Lucas Shaw's like, yeah, fuck Sea Otter. <laughs> I'm going, water bowl. Oh, I can't That's wait. Dope. That's the cool. party's fun. Exciting. Anyway, it's really just Exciting. nice. Loads of people come down and get okay. stoked to voice. The demo loop straight out the door, even yeah. if we just did that, is really rough, really yeah. rowdy. I wrote it this... Was it? Yesterday, did you? Wow, well, this is this is so good. It's still so good. Yeah, yeah it's mm. brilliant. Cool. What, so there's that to do Amazing. an actual pedal, and if you want to just slap some corners and skid sideways, come wow. to the, keep the hill. I'll keep uh, promoting it on here. That's really cool. I'll yeah, it's going to be great fun. Definitely. Oh, we've got the whole fleet of bikes here mm. and stuff. So, okay, can borrow some bikes, rest some jewel, drink a beer, <laughs> send yeah. selfies to side, <laughs> send selfies to side. <laughs> <laughs> but how are you getting on with oh, uh, Speaking of great. community as well, I'll throw this one out there. Uh, you guys obviously got the Kotic CC. Yeah. So where did that come from? How has it grown? What do you do? Everything. I've noticed. Literally everything. <laughs> yeah. We. I was thinking about this today because I knew you'd ask me about it. But 
years ago, 26. Christ, time Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not, I, won't, I won't take forever. It's no, it's <laughs> But we on. made this, um, we made this <laughs> piece. No, no, I'm looking I'm, at the map, not the, not, <laughs> not the imaginary clock. I'm pointing to a, a, the Sheffield's first piece yeah. map for cycling. It's every, um, every riding spot we could get yep. on a map, like a, an illustration. It's, it's brilliant. And then when the Beefy came out, it's the first long shot bike that arrived. We thought, let's try and tick off as many spots on this map as we could uh, with one bike, because mm. it was great. And now we've got Camus riding, who's just this brilliant all round cyclist, mm. does everything skate parks, uplifts, big epic pedals, trails, BMX, yep. the works. On one bike, and we hit up tons and tons of spots. Oh, it's two 12 hour days, I think we got maybe 20 mm -hmm. places or something. Yeah. It, was, it was great. Right. And I thought, that's, that's awesome that we can do all this sort of stuff on one bike. But there were spots that we went to that people who ride mountain bikes wouldn't necessarily have been to. Okay. Not everybody goes to the skate park or the BMX track or the dirt jumps or, or even big long pedals. Mm. Nobody goes to Cycle Speedway. Oh, we, yeah, nobody does. But they should. They, <laughs> they should. They should because it's rad. Oh, it just reminded me that that's another event we should do because it's... It's something that people don't do, and it's a bicycle. I don't want to like. Oh, yeah. It's cool. I spent many years racing people. that, you know. Yeah. Cycle Speedway. Yeah. It's mint. Yeah, many years. It's utterly brilliant. We've done a couple of the mates races on that track, and mm. on the proper bikes. And, oh, I love it. <laughs> but it's it's not like I'm gonna stop mountain biking and pursue a career in no. Cycle Speedway. No. Yeah. But just to give it a go is really important. Mm. Try it twice. Yeah. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it again. Mm. But just, just be open mm. and give it a shot with everything and there's a lot of situations where people don't want to go to a skate park because it's full of scooter kids or people just taking the piss because you're 35 trying mm. to ride a bike that's a little bit big so we thought right let's do it differently hire the place out make it a completely safe environment and safe as you can make things like that nobody's going to be taking the mick it's not really about just... being physically safe it's about being emotionally safe to be quite <laughs> honest <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what that, oh, that. that's what that, that's what it's that's what it's that's what the skate park was all about. Right. It's a, a <laughs> quite a daunting thing, right? Like yeah, you've never session. been in one. Yeah. Like. Well, yeah, that's it. It's scary. It shouldn't be scary because it's not a scary place. But if you've never been in one, it's the fear of the unknown. It's yeah. like, is it scary? I don't know. I never thought about it, so I've never ridden it. Mm. Why would you not ride it? Skate parks are brilliant. Yeah, they're they're everywhere. They're free. They're awesome. So they're indoors when it's raining. Exactly. <laughs> Not and free, but cheap. Not all, well, some of the outdoors ones yep. are generally council built, and councils have got a lot better at building skate parks mm. now after the bleh, dirty early 2000s. <laughs> Two ramps, here's your here's skate, here's your skate park. park. We've banned skating in the town centre, <laughs> killed an entire generation of <laughs> true. street true, sports. True. Yeah. Rubbish. Anyway, um, yeah, so we wanted to do that people haven't been on uplift for the same reasons that you just get some wire yeah. clattering past you on a mm. full on downhill bike and well also there's the, the there's also the element of um, of the reputation of some of these places it's like we were talking about the long shot development like the first time I went to Revs mm. we'd hired out the whole place to ourselves um, because we were going midweek um, but it was literally J JP my riding coach like dragged me there he was like because all I'd seen was massive senders at revs that's all anyone ever sees yeah. at revs massive senders and that that's only like two of the tracks yeah yeah they, I mean don't get me wrong it is seriously steep and gnarly but I'm a full wheels on the ground rider and I bloody love that place because cool. it is so steep and tech and yeah. you can just Right. Again, you think people might just be put off by it. Yeah, they see so like 50 to 1, they see the vision line. Exactly, like, and you think, I ain't going, I ain't going there. Yeah. there. Yeah. And that was exactly my attitude, but actually it's my favourite bike park in the UK. Right. Way more so than, <clears throat> you know, I, Bike Park Wales, for, for me as a wheels on the ground rider, who's a reasonable level, I don't like jumps, mm. and there's a lot of jumps at Bike Park Wales, and I'm too, I get bored on the flow trails there. They're amazing flow trails for, for like, you know, 
sort of beginner intermediate riders. So it's, I can I get why it's busy and it's an awesome facility. But yeah. revs is next level. If you're if you like sort of golfy steep tech stuff, like go to revs. It's mm. fucking brilliant. <laughs> if you don't, you should go to. Revs. You should go. If you don't, you should go to revs as well. Just, yeah. just, oh, it's amazing. That's cool. This isn't paid content, by the way. No, <laughs> just really. Watch I, I, out I only <laughs> like I, I went I I, 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 I went again out. like ten days ago, so yeah. I'm still like fully so stoked on it. Um, but no, but yeah. <laughs> so the, but this was it. It was like that whole thing is like well, Rich was you know that. It was, it, it, this is all, all rich like saying well let's do these th- let's get let's make this what can we do to help people get more stoked on cycling make other parts of cycling more accessible it doesn't yeah. have to be mountain bikes like we went to a skate park the first event we did with the Skate, we don't make a BMX right. it doesn't matter we don't even make a jump bike no just just come down and just bring whatever bike you've got that you think will work in a skate park we've That's got right. a couple you can borrow anyway and people loved it it was really fun awesome um and so we did an uplift and then and how many people the, usually you get in about I think we had like 25, 30 amazing maybe the all first like Kotick fans and riders yeah well you've yeah. got to have a Kotick but you can buy it second hand and you're still in the club yeah. it's one of those cool yeah basically things. if you own a Kotick by any means you're in yeah that's it you come to the uplift if you ride a escapade to commute on we'll, we'll lend you a more suitable bike for riding <laughs> revs but you know yeah the, it's not like we're limiting yeah. only mountain bikers coming. That's really cool. Yeah, and cool. so we just run more events. We had a coaching event with Gas from A-Line. Right. We've got bikepacking coming up in the summer. Um, and we launched the new Beefy as part of one of the rides. So we, oh, let's yeah, just go for a ride yeah. in the evening. And all these people just, just turned up for a ride with the staff. It was a really nice idea. Let's just go for a spin. Span up to the top of Lady Cannings and we had the projector and the new brand new world exclusive bikes there. Yeah. Wow. Literally. Launched them all for these... Yeah. Slightly bemused Celtic fans. <laughs> like, I thought we'd go for a ride. Just like new bikes. What are we doing? How come my wallet's out? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it was great. That's so it's just getting getting people a bit open to other opportunities within cycling because yeah. there mm. are so many. Yeah. And to say you're a mountain biker it limits you drastically. Just say you you ride bikes or you like going outside. Mm. That'll do. Love that. There's a lot going on. Well, cool. Well, cool. It must be cool as well. Is it growing? Like, is more people getting involved in it? Like, yeah, yeah, it's really nice. We've right. just launched an event. The mailing list, if you want in and you own a Cotic, the mailing list is the one because they get the first jump on any booking. Yeah. Um, so that's just so a contact out. page on the website. Sign up, yeah. <clears throat> check your email. Once you sign up, check your email for the confirmation because they can quite often go into spam, mm. the usual thing about these responders. But after that you're on the mailing list you'll get the occasional long technical long technical blog from me you'll get you'll get so to it's know it takes 20 minutes to type it so yeah, yeah, you're going to transcribe this podcast yeah. <laughs> yeah. no, you'll get some you get some technical stuff from me you'll get to hear about the new products you'll get to hear about where the demo tour is and you'll be the first people to hear about the Cotic CC events okay. so yeah that's rad let's fire through another couple of these listener questions though that's okay because some of them were yeah, so what, what, what is the current one that we're selling? Oh, we're going to Tansley, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, rad. Talk to Danny's mum. Danny Hart's yeah. dad's birthday, March the 11th, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, so again, it's another uplift, but um, we've got coaching days, especially the Women of Steel group as well. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's Hannah's baby that we're helping promote, so that's a bit more open to women who don't necessarily own a cottage but want a nice crew to come out and oh, arrive cool. with we're going to do workshop days how to tubeless the tyres and things like that yep. yeah very good that'll be great listen to the question it's a good one at JB Nicholas do you know him? Nope. rings a bell I do <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe's from yeah Joe works for Fox uh, are race results and race athletes still relevant oh. rabbit hole <laughs> yeah how long you got Rabbit yes, home. of course they are because people still watch racing and get stoked on the, yeah. like Formula One level of the sport. But where we were at, you either needed to be winning World Enduros or just being a good person out on mm. the road. So you've you've leaned more towards the ambassador who yeah. is yeah. racing so EWS and stuff like that. Yeah. They can if they want. Yeah, yeah. It's not like okay. They want to yeah. stop them, but so we went from the pressure that we ended up putting people on. Yeah. It was like they, well, they didn't. They put the pressure on themselves, thinking, right, I'm a pro factory racer. I need to be at the top, yeah, and it yeah. just, Cause it kind of instantly kills your mojo when it's a job. 
Mm, but yeah. if he's like, just go and have fun. We don't care what you get. Nobody's going to lose their job if you crash on the first corner. Yeah. It's fine. Just, just enjoy yourself. <laughs> and funnily enough, everybody enjoys themselves yeah. even more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that's where we've come to. We've 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 had a race team for these last few years on a on some kind of a basis, but the last two years, it's been we've never got to a point where we've been able to pay the riders salaries, mm. so they've never been full pro. But aside from that, it was the full deal. Yeah, they got free bikes. They got all of their race expenses paid for them. You know, we sent. You know, Swinney raced EWS European Continental yep. last year. So, yeah. um, so there was, so not an insignificant amount of money, mm, mm. and that was unfortunately, it was. It's not casting any aspersions on the level of effort or commitment from the guys who are racing because they just gave a hundred and ten percent and more. They they were awesome, but as we say. The coverage is such, particularly with enduro, that basically, unless you're Martin Mize and Sam Hill, no one knows nobody who they cares. Are. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And it's ultimately, it's marketing. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Racing-wise, we'd much rather they take that energy and set up their own mates race series, yeah. like this is Sheffield mm. crew, and do that and get stoked because yeah. that's so much more fun. Yeah. For yeah. everybody involved. I know. And, and, and we can all get involved and actually have a race yeah. rather than being spectators in something that we yeah. so I could ride that bike down that track so why don't you yeah yeah. 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 so just do a mates race series so or do some just do some and you guys have got some awesome it. ambassadors like yeah. they're so good you got some well really brilliantly good two, two of the guys who were on our race team from last year have stayed on as a brand ambassadors awesome. this year Will and Will Easy and Che yeah and um, they're and they're you know they're not on the same deal that they were last year. They're getting some support. They've got you know they've kept their bikes, um, but the pressure's off. They don't have to race, and they're both so much happier. Oh, aren't they? happy! Yeah, they're, man, yeah. they're just uh, and as a result, they're much better brand ambassadors. Yeah, yeah. It's just so. <laughs> making content and doing cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, so, easy in particular, it's killing it. Oh, he's so funny. Yeah, it's cool. Good dudes, Keeps us really all good young. dudes, really, really good guys. Yeah. So, so I, I would say, at, if at, for the big brands at the top end, it's not dead at all. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. But I think for anyone below that stage, it's a pretty tough call to make. It's fair. It's good. Okay. Uh, all right. A couple more. Go for it. Then we'll wrap up. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is a fair point. Good question. At Deaconator a one. <laughs> oi, 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 oi. Oi, oi. Uh, why are prices so high for mountain bikes over motorbikes I think a lot of this is probably spawned from the whole Santa Cruz thing well, I had to get a job at a bike brand just to afford a bike <laughs> bikes are expensive they are not cheap but I think a conversation like this really help because yeah. you've just explained how much effort has gone in prototyping testing to you know you're yeah. not paying for that bike you're paying for the you're paying for a lot of effort. Knowledge beforehand. Yeah, and all that. Like that. 20 years of studying and... Yeah, all that. Exactly. yeah. exactly. So no, but yeah, there's a lot that goes into it, but that's... Um, I, gen, I genuinely don't believe... And, and I, re- I recognise that bikes, have, you know, have got... You know, there's certainly some, some other brands do have some pretty eye-watering prices on bikes. I mean, I think ours, our bikes top out at six... Thousand five hundred, okay. but that's not that's not the bread and butter. I think we've sold two of those. Right, you know. Yeah. Um, there's a few things driving it. Obviously, the exchange. You know, most of us, most people import stuff, and um, you know the exchange rate devalued by twenty percent almost overnight mm. four years ago. Mm. So we're still feeling the effects of that. Yeah. Um, and. So yeah, stuff got more expensive, definitely did. But there's also, it's just, it's almost like there's an element of the finance side of it coming in. You know how like the headline price of cars is almost meaningless yeah, now? Yeah, you know you're never going to pay that. Yeah, nobody walks into <coughs> nobody walks into a garage and puts a briefcase of fi- with fifty thousand pounds in it and walks out with a posh BMW. They they have it on the you know they have it on three hundred and eighty quid a month yeah. for 
two years and then they get a new one for 380 quid a month, mm-hmm. don't they? You know, it's like, yeah. and that is how, that, that's how the pricing model of the bike industry is moving. We sell probably 30 odd percent of our bikes, 30 foot, probably more than that. I don't know. We sell a good percentage of our bikes on finance. Okay. And there's, okay. you know, and there is a, yeah. you know, and there's a, there's a cost, there's a cost implication to that. So most, yeah. of, most bike brands have that, have to now have that priced into their model. In all of those where does that all of those eight thousand quid Santa, you know those eight thousand quid Santa Cruises they're not they're not being smashed on a credit card they're no, being no. bought on the finance financed and okay. and because they go through a dealer that dealer's then bears the brunt of the finance and then they've got to make some money and then the distributor's got to make some money mm, mm. yeah yeah what's your take on it Rich we'd like them to last obviously we'd love somebody coming in spending six and a half grand every week on a new bike yeah. but it doesn't feel right at our core if somebody's doing that it's like do you need this come on mm. you, you've got an amazing bike it works mm. just make it work so yeah. change the bearings and go again it's put new tyres on yeah cool bug I was, when did the long shot rocket come out April. What you you talking about your bike yeah. particularly? Well, you yeah. got the you got one of the air freight ones, didn't you? Exactly. So that was that's going to be Feb February eighteen. Yeah, just in time for Howard Street. Yeah, and it's still going. It's perfect. Two years. I gave it a big rebuild last year. I'm like, I'm going to ride this bike for another two years at least. Amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And a lot of it is like you said, a lot I of just that, like make chasing last. having the best bike on the top of the car and all that sort of stuff. Well, there's, there's, a lot there's an there's some of that. Yeah, there's, there's, sure. some, there's some of that, but I think people, are, I get that, that people, it's their pastime and people want, people get a buzz out of buying stuff and if bikes is their thing, then that's cool. But I genuinely, certainly for, for, for our customers, I don't see a lot of that. Mm-hmm. People buy, they spend a lot of money on a new bike every two or three years and they get because they get so much out of it and actually it's a nice treat a lot of birthdays come along and say yeah, oh, yeah, my wife's buying yeah. me this because we've sold a house or we've it's yeah. my 40th because money's tight right for most yeah. people we're not yeah yeah the, yeah, it's not like, cheap you know, things to buy, are they? Whether no. you're buying the cheapest cottage or the more yeah. expensive, it's still and nobody's a lot of money, getting. Like. Uh, you know, there's very few people in this industry who are getting filthy rich. Yes, that's, oh, God, that, yeah. that's the that's the thing I think that says to me that yes, some bike prices are incredibly high, but but I just I I I very very rarely met anyone on the bike supply side who I get the feeling is just gouging people for their <laughs> cash. Yeah, I just people just want to make it trying to make an honest living. That's mm. all you know. That's all I'm doing. I mean, I, you know, I, uh, you know, I don't live if, if particularly extravagantly. As if you know, I certainly don't. Somebody did leave a question on our Insta saying, "How do you even turn up, or you just roll in in your Ferrari every day?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh wow. There's only one bike company I know who I know who owns a Ferrari. Really? Yeah. Are we going to say who it is or not? <laughs> I don't, well, I don't know them, but I know they own a Ferrari. Oh, it's right. Roscoe. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if anyone's good here, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be especially after the acquisition. Fair play, to, fair so fair play no, to there's anything guy. wrong with that. No, no, fair. You know, no, or fair I think it's a different juice. industry. People would be like, yeah, well, whatever. You're in the no. supermarket or whatever. Yeah. But no, that, for some reason, that bikes brand stuff, is just, yeah, the strength of that brand is unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Hats off to him. Um... Let's do one more, then we'll rip it, uh, wrap it up. Uh, b- 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 Let's have a look. Go on, what have you got? Yeah, I have a flip. I've oh. just I took screenshots now. I'm sorry. Okay. <coughs> da, 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 da. There's some lots of questions. Thank you for posting out loads of questions. I appreciate it. That's yeah, um, rather strange sometimes. I'm not going to lie. Care. Being on the back end of this, <laughs> and like, wow. Ah, that's that sort of leads from the last question. Perfect. About Thank you. Things. Barry Dan one. What are your thoughts on kids' progress being hampered due to the price of the sport? The amount of people that come back and say, I want to buy a new bike and my son or daughter is going to ride my old small because generally bikes are were a lot smaller when we started off old small beefy. You cannot find an extra small beefy. Obviously pre long shot because we didn't have them. Um for Loving the money anywhere right. because they just get snapped up to turn into kids bikes for the next generation of Sick. riders. Yeah. Yeah. So just dig in your shed and recycle stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, my my That's um, it. Like, yeah. no need to hamper my, yourself. Um, yeah. My my daughter my daughter's bike is a it's a current production extra small sole frame, but it's got twenty six inch wheels in it. Even though it's it's got the old demo fleet twenty six inch wheels in it. Mm. Um, it's got my old ten speed drivetrain on it. It's got some twenty quid each. Dior brakes, you know, yeah. it's good. It's it Bit really, the it's future. really functional. Yeah, and it's it's really functional, but it's the vast majority of it is my old stuff. Mm. Um, so that that's the thing. I think on the flip side of it, in terms of you know, bikes being expensive to get into the sport, I I think that it's really tricky because. <laughs> certainly up to a point bikes weren't expensive weren't as expensive when we got into the sport because they were a lot more basic yeah yeah you know the bike i raced on when i was was when i was a junior racing xc in 1993 there's a photo on that video if you check it out it's good no really yeah, yeah. i don't um, remember seeing that one but i'll take it <laughs> and it was a Full rigid, you know, mm. canty brake, um, you know, mountain mm. bike. It, it was, uh, you know, our gravel bike is more capable than that bike <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so the thing was is that actually, because the sports progressed and the technologies progressed, and then the trails have progressed and the sports progressed and the technologies progressed, and so the circle goes, mm. that actually it's really unenjoyable to ride a rigid bike even a good shaped rigid bike down a half mm. gnarly kind of track yeah, these days yeah, yeah yeah and ultimately and, and a cheap suspension fork is crap <laughs> so you need to spend so unfortunately it's like i and i totally get it i own a bike company and i and i had a plenty of sharp intakes of breath about whether i ought to buy my kids an isla bike when they were little true the best kids bikes out there bar none mm. and I was still like you still get you probably get a trade deal and you're like <laughs> yeah you know that's um, yeah but ultimately they enjoy it a lot better and if you want to share it with your kids you've got to mm. you know it, I, it's tough it's tough it, I, I totally sympathise with the point of view but mm. I think it's just where this, I don't think it's the sport I don't, again I don't genuinely don't think anyone's out there gouging people for kids bikes some of the kids bikes I see some of these full suspension kids bikes I can't believe they do them so cheaply yeah. to be quite yeah. honest because all they are is little grown up bikes yeah. still develop them they cost exactly still, the same to make probably more <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah probably more because yeah. there's less there's less volume to offset the development costs true. it's yeah. a lot of everybody else's responsibility to clear out their old stuff yeah true there's a place that's like recycle bikes we drop so much stuff off really? there it's like we're never going to use these bars or yeah. these pedals or something these these are no good to us they can sit in a box for another four years or we can just take them to a shop they will accept them in Mm. build them up sell the bikes yeah. send a load off to Africa right they, yeah. they're really really good and there's tons of these places yeah. so just go through your shed build up what you can or flog or give away there's a kid down the street who needs a bike give him a bike yeah. or her a bike yeah, yeah. if it's worthless if you're tripping over it in a garage it's true yeah. it's a fair point no it's absolutely right and, and Rich is absolutely right about the whole thing about the fact that the sports progressed in terms of the technology over the last few years because like again my daughter's bike she's got some she's got some like she's, she has got these like carbon riser bars on her bike right. they're 630 mil wide because <laughs> they're from like 14 years ago or something like that they literally just, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah and they're crazy like they were probably like 100 plus quid yeah. at the time That's and, they, and they are literally useless to any mm adult mountain biker but my daughter is five foot tall yeah so they are absolutely perfect and this is it all and that's how their bikes ever since they outgrew like isla bikes and was were tall enough to for me to modify my own bikes that's all that's mostly what it's been it's been my old drive trains it's been you know mm. old wheel sets it's been old handlebars and you just fill in the gaps yeah you know where you can and even that stuff's not like i say i haven't gone like crazy money on it mm. 
So yeah, they've got nice bikes, but they're not. You know, yeah. a lot of it is used, used second-hand, stuff, yeah. used yeah. good stuff that's now just appropriate for their yeah. height. Awesome. Good question, though. Yeah, really good. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you think needs mentioning, or do you think we're good? Your moto career. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can do it now what for you. Like Awful. Two hours. Of- Failed. Oh, yeah, end of conversation. That's the best podcast ever. <laughs> oh, man. At least we got Two it in hours? there. Jesus. Sorry, everyone. That's amazing. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, <laughs> so, if, is there anything you think we need to touch on? Uh, we've covered well, most stuff, I think, that came in from listening good. questions. Um, have you enjoyed yourself? Have I? Yeah. Have a wonderful night, mate. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Tu- what day is it? It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. I had to ask as well. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. When's the week? <laughs> it's been a lovely day. Yeah, really nice. Nice just to hang out with you. You know, we. I feel like we'd have, like you said at the start, we'd probably have this sort of conversation in the pub together, but it's nice that a few thousand people are going <laughs> yeah, to always a bit eerie. Hi, but, but Yeah, it's crazy. Um, no, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to ride the bike. As always, love it. Like thanks for doing it. what you do like you guys are killing it it's great Thank and you. it's nice to have a bit more of an insight even from my perspective like to hear the story you told about like the development and all that sort of stuff it's it's interesting so yeah. anytime you guys want to do it you know thanks, like, anytime like literally anytime Cheers. you're always welcome um, people where can they find out more about Kotick if they don't already website's a good start yep. there's so much information on there um, sign up to the newsletter it's the the thing you do is get rid of the box that says <laughs> so accept cookies sign up to the newsletter cool. but just don't just sign up because it's not crap okay. we try really hard to make it not crap yeah, yeah. Uh, it's from, the, yeah the thing with the newsletter from uh, it's not one of these you know buy stuff now spamathons. it is genuine every single newsletter every single email that gets sent out is from one of us mm-hmm. if you hit reply you get one of us cool that's it Amazing. it's like that's you know because it's, it's it's important yeah yeah uh, Instagram yep at at Cotic Bikes cool um, that's really good. Fun. TikTok. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm a fossil. I <laughs> no, I have to ask my dog for that. Um, Amazing. But yeah, just cool. then, get in yeah. touch with Face- real people in a real yeah. place with a real phone number. Yeah. yeah. Come Facebook. and visit. Yeah, Facebook. Demo tour. Yeah, yeah demo Sam's tour. out on the road, which is crazy. Yeah, He's if, all you over. Ride, if you want to ride one of the bikes, it's free. We take it out on the road. If you've got a few mates who you want to get together, we'll come and ride on your trails. You don't even yeah. have to come to a like a group demo if you mention the podcast Sam brings biscuits too right. <laughs> there you go yeah, man. <laughs> get That's that card one. rinsed no, man. he's good he's good I hate you for that uh, and mate no thanks again appreciate you taking the time out no thanks Absolute for having pleasure us. and uh, it's a wrap cheers cheers yeah. take care done beautiful nice